Hello everybody, we're live and I'm joined tonight by the undisputed king of Dwarf Fortress himself, Blind. I would just like to state that, that, that saying that was her idea, it not was. mine. <laughs> so I, I do not claim any kinship over any land, dwarfy or otherwise. It's certainly, certainly I how I compliment. think. <laughs> Uh, so, Blind, let's assume that there's somebody watching who hasn't heard of you. Would you like to just introduce yourself, let people know about your experience with Dwarf Fortress and where they can find you? I, I expect my adamantine throne stat, uh, first and foremost. But um, <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I, I'm Blind. I make videos on YouTube and I stream video games on Twitch. Uh, it's this weird job that people have these days. Uh, I like things that are ASCII and things that once were ASCII, and I like complicated games that I can just kind of play forever, uh, which means I play a lot of Dwarf Fortress. So that's kind Indeed. of the short version. How long have you been playing in total? What's your What's your Dwarf Fortress origin story? Uh, so I first, uh, this is a pretty publicly known story, but I first installed uh, Dwarf Fortress in 2009, actually, while in, in between games of Counter-Strike, because we were waiting for somebody to finish eating lunch or something, and a, and a friend of mine was like, have you heard of this game, Dwarf Fortress? And I was like, no, why? And he goes, well, you should try it, it's free. I'm like, really? Okay, so I downloaded Dwarf Fortress and then generated a world and it crashed, and then I deleted it off my desktop. That's the first time I downloaded Dwarf Fortress. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Then I, I just like was like, well, that there goes that, and then like played Counter Strike for a couple months. And then that friend a little, couple months later was like, hey, I, did, did you try that game at all? I'm like, no, it crashed. Um, and he goes, oh, well, you should try again. I'm like, okay. So I tried again, um, fiddled around with it, and then again got to the point where, uh, you know, you have to like embark, right? I was able to generate a world, uh, but I had to get to the point where I had to embark, and I don't think I made it through the embarking screen. Um, right. I made it to like the one where you see the three different like world sizes, and then just like I think I tried to Alt F4 and it didn't work, so I just like to, like removed the process from my computer, and uh, told told said something offensive to my friend about the game, and was like this is, this seems awful, and then went back to playing Counter Strike because I was a surly teenager. Um, then like roughly a year later, there was a article on I, was it Wired? I can't I can't actually remember, but um, I I actually looked up the article for a video that I made recently, which I could go dig through and find. <laughs> um, but um, it might have been TechCrunch. Anyway, um, there was an article written about Dwarf Fortress where it talked about like sprawling code and like endless generation and stories, and I think quoted Boat Murdered in a few places. And I was like, hey, I heard about that once, so I downloaded it again. And this process just kind of continued, maybe twice a year until about 2016, 2017, where I would just read an article about it, remind myself that the game existed, download it, try it for 30, 40 minutes, get frustrated, Alt F4 and uninstall. Um, until eventually, like, sometime in 2015, where I started, like, kind of quietly playing in the background, because I've been streaming already at this point for a couple of years. Um, very different games, mostly. Yeah. And uh, I got to the point where I could, like, build beds and, like, survive a year or two, which is, I think, about where most people who play, Dwar who, air quotes, play Dwarf Fortress get to, yeah. and then kind of go, yeah, I can play Dwarf Fortress, I have the nerd cred now, and then you go back to doing whatever else you do. Um, and then it was 2017 chat started annoying me to play it because they because I tweeted out a screenshot of a world at some point that I generated. Mm. Um, and so chat started bugging me to play it. And then I think it was 2018 ish. I started streaming it like one day a week. And by 2019, it was like the only thing I did. <laughs> it gets you that way, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they announced the Steam version. I was like, well, maybe this isn't a bad idea, actually. <laughs> Because <laughs> initially it was me just kind of accepting that my channel was going to die because like I'd gotten partnered in 2018 yeah. and I was one of those channels that really peaked high and then crashed down to nothing right. after getting partnered. Uh, and so I was very much expecting my channel to just die um, after that. I'm... And it, it basically did for like a good six months there. Like I think I, I lost like two thirds of my audience. Uh, my sub count plummeted down to like nothing. Like I was making like nothing for the summer of 2019. And but, now uh, <laughs> you're doing really well, and that's so good to see. Um, to quote another streamer who I really like named Excessive Profanity, this, I can't say that word because that's a, very much a grown-up word, uh, this I idiot will just say, stream the same game for half a decade and now he blew the hell up. Everybody else take <laughs> notes. I'm like, go insane playing one game for five years? I don't know if I would take notes on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. 
and yeah, I started Long Death in August 2020, mm -hmm. and it's not even halfway done, and I probably won't finish it. <laughs> Uh, so tonight we are going to be covering power um, and uh, I thought I would start off by just giving you an idea of what we've got here Blight. We're going to start off by looking at um, the perpetual motion water wheel system as one version and to give chat an idea of what to expect tonight what we're going to do is look at this is one way to use water for power we're then going to have a look at a video that Blinds made uh, where we use running water for power. Uh, we divert a... Is it, was it a river or a stream? I, Whatever the one you can yeah. walk over is called. I can never remember if it's a brook or a, a creek. Brook, I think, yeah. A it's brook. a brook? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think so it's the same thing. There was um, a, how, to, how to divert a brook uh, to use that for power. Then we're going to have a... Um, Blind's going to show us a fortress he's got, which ha uses an aqua for, for power. And then uh, we're going to have a look at wind power and we'll see about sticking a windmill on the roof of this, uh, this fortress here. But starting with the water wheel system, I'll show you what we're aiming to achieve here. So in a previous stream, we were looking at how to build pump stacks. And in this fortress, the most of the industry is kind of around about elevation, anywhere sort of down to about minus 10, that kind of thing. Between zero and, ten, and minus 10 is where I intend the fortress to, to live. Um, down, so minus 14 was as high as I could bring all of this without causing trouble. Um, but the magma sea is really, really low. Um, so it's down at about minus 75. So what we've got is a pump stack. I managed to get it past two of the caverns. There we go. So we've got the, yeah, we've got the magma sea down here at minus 75. And what I want to do is to pump it upstairs. Let's just scoot up there. And um, this pump here will fill this chamber with magma. It's just a sealed chamber. I've got um, a magma proof drawbridge on the side. So if I want to draw magma off for some other, maybe more nefarious purpose, <clears throat> I'll have a way to access the magma in the future. Uh, but the primary thing I want to do is um, up here, I've got a room dug out that I can use for magma workshops and stuff. Because my, my little temporary magma workshops are down at, like, in the minus 70s. And that's that's a very long walk for the dwarves. Um, Have you ever transported uh, lava with minecarts? Do you know, I did once, but that was so long ago. <laughs> Uh, and that is something, that's part of the reason why I put this in. It's something that I want to experiment with um, or to look at in one of our future episodes in the future. Gotcha. Well, since you have power so close by, it would be very easy to yeah. like, power minecarts with that. Although you might want to start the minecarts two layers above wherever the lava is so that it'll get out the other side without getting stuck. Uh-huh. Because if it gets stuck in lava, good luck getting it unstuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do have a little bit of space around here as well. Cool. Although there is kind of a weird bug in the game right now where minecarts become invisible if they're yeah. full of lava. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Kind of a problem. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get the dwarfs building something. So the idea behind uh, how this system works is we need a reservoir of water below. Oh, this is at least how I've built these in the past. And if you do anything different, blind by. By all means, shout up. Um, I fill the reservoir with water below and then a um, bunch of pumps attached to water wheels. Then the pumps are attached by gear mechanisms um, and axles to transfer the power to the pump stack. The pump stack's all hanging off each other, built from the top down so that we get the, the least impact on FPS. Um, and sometimes what I've found is if I get this whole system built before I let the water in, sometimes it'll actually kickstart itself. Uh, and I don't, yeah. but otherwise, uh, if it doesn't kickstart, then we just get a dwarf out here to come and run the pumps. 
the pumps will fill this back area with water and there's nowhere for the water to go except across the top of the water wheels uh, then it'll drop down through these gates and it'll power the water wheels now the the water wheels produce uh, 100 power they require 10 power to operate themselves each pump requires 10 power to operate um, the mechanism, the, the gear assemblies require five. The axle pieces require, oh gosh, I think it's two. Um, I think it's two per tile, yeah. Yeah. So I worked out with the, the net of um, a gear assembly and pump and a water wheel. Each water wheel produces a net of about 80 power. So I worked out for the pump stack that we've got to power how many water wheels i'm going to need to do that um and i think i've calculated it correctly and thrown in a couple of extra in case i need more power for something else we'll yep. find out <laughs> something i would also like to just throw out there is if you click on the lava or, or the pump stack tower mm. it will just tell it you how much it's you. going to use mm -hmm. so because uh uh rob from hd in chat just asked uh, it looks like 650. yep it's a little pixely on Discord for me, but uh, yeah, six hundred and fifty-eight. So uh, so far, so uh, that includes the pumps, that includes the axles, that mm -hmm. includes the wheels, that includes everything. Yeah, gives you a full list out on how much power something's going to use. So in this, so I guess that would mean we'd need seven water uh -huh. wheels, approximately, plus if probably eight or nine. Yeah, so we've got plenty of space and. Like I said, because I, I figured I might want to connect, I might want to use this power system for other things in the future. I've built it a little larger than we need. Uh, yeah. Let's get the other pumps in. So we want to pump to the back. Uh, green glass blocks, glass corkscrew, glass tube. Um, these do not need to be magma, magma proof because we're in, uh, we're just pumping water. But I've already got it all set up for um for magma so oops hang on a second i, I didn't that set the wrong that direction one. yep screw pump pump to the back glass blocks corkscrews tubes pump to the back blocks corkscrews tubes and this used to be something i used to always macro back in the day <laughs> there we go so there's the pumps will let the um the dwarfs come build those it and used... also you can queue up water wheels once the pumps say, are in place it... same with um gear assemblies you can queue them up as soon as they're queued up and they'll just build them afterwards all right so n these days we can put the water wheels straight in now as soon as we've got the plans for the pumps in mm -hmm. is that right i can start building yep. the water wheels right now oh, i mean cool. you could do that before too oh could you in days yeah I always built the pumps first. Um, let's put you... Hey, do you know, you can use any old wood. I don't mind. Nothing like a little bit of color variation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, think they'll actually, I think they'll actually bring the pieces before they're constructed. Right. In this, like when, it, when it's like this. But they won't actually build it. Mm. And I'm doing this in air quotations. So this is great in a non-visual non format. Uh, but they, they won't build it until like the the support is actually there otherwise oh, cool. it would collapse and so we can get the gear mechanisms in above as well uh let's get so those to answer a up. question from chat mm -hmm. a system like this would not work with lava because lava doesn't have any flow and you need flow yeah whereas water has flow so when water is moving off of the map it is generating like motion I guess, which is also something I can show uh, later in this stream when I talk about sizzle tongs and why part of it doesn't work, uh -huh. um, because I was dumb and didn't think it would work that way, but it ended up working that way. Um, but uh, yeah, if water is not flowing actively, or if the game just considers it a pool, then it won't generate power. Just so. thought blind, since as we can build these and they'll build them in order, have you, because I've in the past, I've always built the, oh, in fact, to the present day, when I've built pump stacks where they hang off each other, I've always mm -hmm. built them one at a time. No, you can queue the whole thing up. You can queue the I whole thing I used to macro up. the entire thing and then just let them do it afterwards. Huh. Yeah. 
and they'll build them in any order too, which is really funny because if you can de if you deconstruct one of them, the, the whole collapse. thing will collapse, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you just queue the whole thing up, they will just build the whole thing in any order and they don't collapse while they're being constructed, which I think is really funny. Huh. Because it considers the, I guess, the planned one, like the, the ones that are already here, it considers those to be a built item that is supporting the thing above it. Oh, right. So you could, before they're constructed down here, you could go and attach mechanisms to the top. Oh, just had a thought. Um, we need carpenters for this, and I've only got one carpenter, so I'm just going to allow a bunch of people to do carpentry for a moment. So they come down, and we've got more more hands to the... Well, I was going to say to the pumps. More hands to the water wheels. I wonder if the water wheels are still considered carpentry now, or if they're considered... Uh just a general construction labor because of all of the labor consolidation that happened in this version. I've been watching the water wheels being built and they've all the four that are built so far they were all built by the carpenter. All right. Well, I guess so, that that. yeah, um I I haven't ruled out that nobody else could do it, but um I do give my dwarfs plenty of downtime, so there's usually labor available. Mhm. Mm Lots and of downtime means there's extra labor for when a job queues up. Yeah, indeed. And Explosive Hornex says windmills are still carpentry too. Rest in peace, architecture. No longer a career path. Mm. Although I did have a dwarf show up that was named an architect, but I think that that was um, architect in the librarian. Yeah, I was going to say, is that like, a, in the like a astronomer and physicist and mathematician? Chemist. That sort of chemist yeah i love that that is one of my favorite aspects to the game i i love putting down libraries and getting a whole bunch of like creating a dwarven university <laughs> it's, uh... i, I, I kind of had a little back and forth with somebody in youtube comments because they were very upset that the skills in the library didn't actually do anything in game i'm like well i don't know about you but like if somebody learns how big the universe is that doesn't exactly change your kitchen job very much now does it yeah and actually they can there are some skills that they can learn from the library um mm -hmm. doctoring skills particularly if you get a book on something like suturing You'll start mm -hmm. finding that you've got a whole bunch of novice wound dressers in your fortress. Yep. But it d it doesn't unlock anything, right? Like yeah. an astronomer in your fortress doesn't give you like an astronomy shop or something. Yeah. But there is the capability for the modding of that at some point. <laughs> and it is a simulated world. It's it's very different to other games where every every interaction means mm -hmm. something to you the player well we do know that there is a moon being simulated at least <laughs> yeah yeah indeed degree. and we know that there's tides sort although of. i've seen <laughs> according to the books um i i've seen some there's certainly some dispute amongst the dwarfs as to whether the the earth goes around the sun or the sun goes around the earth can't say that I've seen that one. I, yeah. I did once get a, a, like a very passive aggressive set of arguments between two of my scholars and the books that they were writing. Uh, one was uh, pulleys, the future, followed by pulleys, a disgrace to society, followed by <laughs> pulley, pulleys, a wizard's guide, followed by pulleys, the fall of our civilization. <laughs> That's <All> fantastic. Right? <laughs> um, oh dear. My co streamer, Mia. Um, was helping me, you know, when I, uh, in back in 2020, I did a big deep dive into the the science behind stress and happiness and emotions and mm -hmm. how all of those mechanics worked. And I I'd run a bunch of experimental fortresses trying to get, trying to make it as repeatable as possible. And then I took all the data on the dwarf's thoughts and. Um, put that all into spreadsheets. It took me three weeks to pass the data, and he mm. was helping me. And one of the things that he's he'd never played Dwarf Fortress certainly at this point, and so this was all new to him. And he was um, recording. He was looking at the dwarf's thoughts on books, and in one of the particular fortresses I was looking at, there was about seven different titles related to funnels. And he was in absolute hysterics as he was um, as he was recording the the data, 
about the fact that these dwarfs were getting so obsessed with funnels. There was a dwarf who, it started with a dwarf who was, had a happy thought that they'd learnt the secret of funnels. And then somebody else was happy that they'd read funnels, what are they about anyway? And then somebody else had read Funnels, My Only Mistake. And he was, uh, he was yeah, he just found it incredibly funny that um, all of these books on funnels had all turned up in my fortress and my dwarves are just totally obsessed with funnels. Huh. Did any of them make a funnel cake, though? <laughs> oh, if only. We don't get funnel cake here in the UK. And, oh, so tasty. We don't even really get it here in Canada. Mm. <laughs> Putting the fun in funnels, indeed. Right, let's see. We've got the mechanisms up above. So the only thing we need to do now, this is all set up and ready to go. That's all sealed in. This is all built. Right, let's connect the rest of this power up to there. So we want to build um, a horizontal axle. So I've got to ask, how uh, are we going to be filling this? Are we going to be using buckets? Are we going to no, I've got bring a, water from somewhere else? I've got a reservoir of water ready to go. I'll show okay. you that in just a second. Because, you know, it's it's you can't have fun without dumping water on things. <laughs> right, I'll let them build that and I'll show you my, my well system that I've got. Um, I'll take you up to the surface and show you this what i'm working with so over here i've got a river and we're in a, a subarctic environment it the this river is frozen six months of the year so it's okay this freezes from the start of autumn to the end of spring so it's only um yeah it's in fact it is more than six months of the year that this this river's frozen that's so, one heck of a newbie trap, that river. Uh, yeah, isn't it just? <laughs> uh, I think it's that little pocket there is where I've channeled down. Yeah, so the water... So I empty the reservoirs and it refills uh, every year. The water is coming down a staircase here. Then it goes through a U-bend uh, and then up through a grate so that I can leave it constantly open without worrying about things coming through. And then because the river uh, freezes so often, I have quite a large reservoir of water here. So we've got one, two, three layers of water, plus whatever's in the, the pipe as well. Um, that's just there to fill my wells. So I've got a channel coming out here that fills the well. In fact, I might want to close that. Let you don't me... want to drain your well. Yeah, into the... we don't want to drain the well indeed. I mean, it might cause some fun, but... <laughs> Just in case we need some water in the well. Let's um, let's pull the reservoir west lever. That'll close this bridge up. Any time now? Once Indeed. your is finishes there you walking. There you go. And then, so all I need to do is pull this lever. And we've got this tunnel that leads down to the staircases goes past cavern layer one uh, just to grab this question from explosive horn neck what I would say with glaciers is generally what you'd want is you'd want an aquifer so then you're just underground regardless mm. and keeping the water at a layer where um, the like what, what's the word um, where it doesn't freeze but uh and in regards to windmills i don't think the windmills are freezing but wind can stop <laughs> and wind yeah. isn't always consistent uh which is why you see so few people using windmills i personally feel like in the game windmills should generate like twice the power of water wheels or something so people are actually incentivized <laughs> to use them because they produce less power they use more wood and they're less convenient and less consistent and unreliable. So, like, the actual reasoning behind using windmills, aside from the fact that they look cool, is almost null, mm. unfortunately. Does the bridge rising or lowering destroy the water in those tiles? Uh, yes, I believe so. I'm, yep. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe so. The way it the mechanics work. sometimes. Yeah, I'd noticed that. Right. Yeah, I, I, used, I used to use drawbridges to clean water tunnels um, 
for invaders. So invaders would run in, I'd uh -huh. drown them with water, and then I'd drain the water instantly by pulling a lever and closing it. Which right. is, I... like, the most scientifically confusing thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I think like, we're ready to... Where'd the water to... go? I don't know. I'm not gonna worry about it. Ready Away. to pull that lever and let the water down. I've got a shut off at the bottom, so I've got that shut off at the bottom now. We'll let this tunnel fill up first. Let's see how quickly it goes. I'm kind of curious. Yeah. So building water, uh, so building windmills would be a chaotic venture indeed. Chaotic as in Don Quixote. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's filled that up pretty fast. Is it bad that I'm kind of hoping the whole thing's just flooded? Yeah! <laughs> just floods when you pull this lever. <laughs> like, I'm just kind of sitting here going like, eh, like yeah, I mean, it, diagonal, it, it might. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The diagonal there is Indeed. ruining my hopes and dreams. Yeah. Well, I, it's something where, do you know, I almost forgot to put the diagonal in. <laughs> uh, but I was looking at it after I built it. It's like, right, have I got everything set up for this? Yeah. Hang on a second. <laughs> Where's that diagonal gone? Damn it, I've mined it out. Uh, right, let's pull a lever. I think we're fairly safe. Although something about drawbridges, like there's a slight delay on them now. Like they used to just be like instantaneous. Mm. There's a slight delay on them now. Like the dwarf pulls the lever and then it's like, I don't know, it's like yeah, four or five ticks, ticks later yeah. To, yeah. before the drawbridge goes. And there's been a couple of times where I forgot to put diagonals in on a thing. And then just like, you just see the dwarf going up the staircase as just this wall of water <laughs> fills up the roof. And it's like, oops, uh, this is fine. So on, on the lower layer, I think we'd need about four of seven in order for this setup to work. Yeah. Because we need to give the water movement. We do. I mean, if it if the water wheel if the water doesn't kick off uh, the water wheels, that's actually preferable. Because if I can fill this whole chamber to seven uh, and then close the drawbridge, it will. Once the pumps start pumping to the back here, it'll start dropping the layer down here. Um, so when you're, uh, so for people who are not familiar with these machines, you do you can't keep them full at the bottom because the water needs somewhere to go down. If I left this water running and it was still connected to the river above, this would fill to a level seven, and then the pumps would pump to the back here and then if there was nowhere for the water to go the pumps would then it would then flow over the top of the grates and just start filling up this room so you can then you'd have a fish tank yeah you would you just have a fish tank and no water uh, so we can fill this room as long as the pumps don't start running by themselves and it doesn't look like they have this time you could just jump to the top actually probably mm. and close the drawbridge on the top and there's probably enough water in that tunnel to fill that yeah yeah <laughs> but i think we've got i'll just let this um fill up and then i'll i'll close this one and then i can leave this tunnel full and mm -hmm. it'll the reservoir will refill when the uh, uh when the river freezes in or um, when the river defrosts in six months time when the ri river defreezes mm-hmm mm -hmm. Very scientific terms. <laughs> Although you could theoretically defrost the river using lava. But that would I've be... never done that. If it's exactly one layer beneath, it will thaw it. Ah. But it has to be one layer beneath. I've had um, I've had plenty of um, interesting times with um, with frozen rivers. Because what you can do is if you have like a lava pump that goes directly into the middle of the river and then split it in both directions hmm. um, and then underneath the river, it you it, assuming you have some way to drain it so that there's still lava underneath the edge tile or touching the edge tile, you can actually get rivers flowing again, even in the middle of winter when they're frozen. Hmm. Interesting. We're actually getting mist over there on the right. We are, yeah. Is this coming down the... Uh... The waterfall. Well, is this coming down the stairs? It's a water shoot. Yeah. We're nearly there. So with these systems 
because they they create mist and you get a little bit of splashing and stuff there will be a bit of evaporation over time uh, if I wanted this to be running as on a permanent basis every so now and then I'd need to come and top up the water here but it will take a long time for it to evaporate down to a point where it becomes unusable mm. and certainly just to to pump the magma to fill that chamber we've got plenty of water here to keep that running okay i think we're about also, there you basically do. have an infinite supply to refill it so. yeah that'll do let's Just shut off the water down below one of the many waiting games of dwarf fortress <laughs> That is also the, the, the one thing where I'm just like, yeah, I mean, but like you could just let it fill up full pressure and it'll go way faster. <laughs> you just might not be able to stop it, but like, where's your sense of adventure? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, uh, let's start these pumps and we'll see what happens. I'll just get the, we probably only need one of the pumps kicking off maybe but we'll, we'll get a bunch down there. Any dwarf that comes down and starts working on these pumps will get happy thoughts because it's going to um, it's gonna be uh, a bit of a mist bath for them. And now we wait for the saves. Indeed. Oh, I should check. I think I did have traders in um, a little bit before we started the stream. Um those those traders should have left i can close up my fortress for the winter the um uh, I, I don't know if you've discovered the glory of uncompressed saves yet but uh no. most of my saves are about three to five gigs <laughs> but um, the load screen is real fast i haven't in the premium version i used to use uncompressed saves in classic ah i, I generated a 3096 year old world uh-huh oh yeah um, and it's 11 gigabytes wow <laughs> <laughs> that was my test world before i uh, had tarn on and then when when i spoke with sack and tarn i generated another one which was like four oh that was but... yeah 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 that, okay that was the one i was thinking of uh, that one made it to 2077 mm. or 2078 i think they were going for 2077 but i missed I mean, when you're, when you're talking about, like, four million dead <laughs> historic figures, like, <laughs> you know. That's that's a lot of people to track. If I were to, like, let the game run for, like, another thousand years or so, we might almost be getting to human populations. <laughs> there we go. Um, let me just pop upstairs and check that. Yeah, the traders have left. I'll just close up for the winter. I've got uh, 32 necromancer towers in the vicinity, so... Only 32? <laughs> yeah, so wow. um, we do get invaded quite frequently. Yeah, just I need to... a lot to... of coverages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got um, a... This is my latest design for passive... Passive management of the various types of invaders that we get it's the a non-combat version uh the only things that my dwarves have been involved in fighting uh are monkeys but um yeah everything else we've been able to destroy one Just way or another them. yeah anything that i can crush uh we crush and then uh, I'll, I'll zoom out and show you how this system's working so if we take this entrance, for example, uh, guard dogs to keep an eye out for thieves. If we get um, <clears throat> if we get crushable invaders, then I close the doors around the dogs and open up this bypass to the south. Um, sorry, to the west, <laughs> and that allows them to means I don't need to move my dogs. Um, they come through the bypass, through the bridges, and uh, I crush them in the bridges. If I've got something that's too big but can go through, too big to be crushed but can go through a cage trap, 
I use this bypass instead and I've just got a few cage traps down there so that'll deal with things like giants and dragons and stuff and then if I haven't had one yet but if I get something like a titan come down what I do with a titan is I've got a bait dog down here that's what draws the enemies in I can seal off my fortress because you know when you've got uh, when you've got crusher drawbridges going you don't want your dwarfs running out to clean up the blood um, I close up the fortress and the enemies path in to try and get to the dog. So what I've got is these thin tunnels here that I can set up a, a really long path to draw in something like a titan to try and get to the dog uh, with the intention of trapping it in one of the thin tunnels. And then I would hold that titan there until I get some other enemy that's difficult to deal with and then I trap that in a different tunnel and set them to battle each other out. I generally use the much simpler solution of dump lava on their head. <laughs> yeah, and that's something that I might be looking at in a future stream. This sort of this this is a, a passive system but we can put some active traps in there as well so I'm thinking like uh, the way I've got this set up I've got some space to be able to work with and with both magma and water on hand I think we'll be able to do something interesting with this in future mm -hmm. uh, but oh, totally I mean I, I just like systems of destroying vile force of darkness that looks traumatic instead of <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> indeed Right, let's let the dwarves come down and uh, start up the pumps. And this is where all the metalheads in chat put on pumping iron power by Grail Knights. <laughs> it's a like eight like eighties themed like superhero slash supervillain themed band, but and that song's about working out. <laughs> just, just a thought. Um, winter is my training season. I just wanted to make sure. Oh. Hang on. Strange mood. Weaponsmith should be going downstairs. Strange. Indeed. Someone's going to be busy for a bit. Right. We... Yeah, we've just entered training season. It might take a little mo... Oh, no. Here we go. <laughs> I missed the dwarf coming and powering up the pump. Uh, so someone's come. Well, and seems to be working. Yeah. Water wheels are working now. Pump stack. Let's see how much power it's generating. Pump stack is working. Well, that would be a fun thing to do with this fort, actually, would be making an obsidian room. Mm. Easy peasy. Okay, so... 1,200 power? Yeah, 1,200 power. Overshot a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a bit to spare. We need 836 now that all the things are connected. almost full already. It is. Nice and quick. You can also um, actually generate a little bit of pressure behind lava um, if you put in floodgates and have the floodgates closed and then you just let the pumps pump for a little bit. They will pump more lava into that room than can actually fit there. Hmm. And when you open the flood floodgates, like that pump right there would probably fill 80% of that in about half a second. Wow. Yeah, so you can, if, if you have like four pumps in a line pumping into a single tile funnel, you can actually like get some pretty close to water speeds of lava walls going boosh. <laughs> I've never seen the animation of the pumps working before. It's a little gears moving. Oh, that's really neat. Look at that. It's a little gearbox. Yeah. It's actually, I think, the same animation as the uh, gear mechanisms. And uh, the same animation, I think, is also on the windmills. Uh -huh. Have you built windmills No, in this I haven't built a windmill in this version. I've not built a windmill since, uh, oh, I don't know, about 2021, I think it was, when I built my last windmill. Well, you, you, know, the big, you know about the big change for windmills in this version, right? No, and that's something, because uh, I know you've, you've um, dabbled a bit with windmills in this version, so I was going to ask you all about what's new. Well, you can connect power to the side of them now instead of just underneath the middle. Oh, actually, somebody did tell me that in chat um, the other day. 
And uh, yeah, and that was not something I was aware of. Yeah, that's one of the coolest changes about it. You should yeah. check out that artifact. Just make sure it's getting made. So oh yeah, we should. Because, because I did have somebody. I got carried away when I was streaming the pump stack build, and I did have somebody go insane. Uh, yeah, they've begun their mysterious construction. Unfortunately, that probably means that it's not going to be out of a nice metal. I'm going to So sniping bet. a question from Pete mm -hmm. Um Does the water go through the wheel or is it impassable? Uh, the water falls down to the layer below on the wheels and the pump, the end of the, at the pump, the, the part the water come out of acts like a wall. So things can't pass through that. But big creatures could topple that side. All she's got is one copper bar. It's not, gonna, copper it's not gonna be our best artifact, but it'll do. Copper crown? Copper... She's Oop. a weaponsmith, so it'll be a short sword or a crossbow or something. Uh, probably menacing with copper Bonky spikes stick. of... Uh, with Menacing with spikes of copper. Without a doubt. M maybe a... Um, actually, maybe a copper pick. That could be cool. Oh, could be. Yeah. That'd be nice. Right, let's... Copper Pick sounds like a good tavern name to me. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> right, so I haven't built in a method to switch the power off here. This power will continue to run until oh, the that's water's dry. Fine. Yeah, which is fine. We there's no no concern with that. Um, so what I will be able to do now is to channel holes in this area up here and put down, like, move my magma forges and magma smelters and things up here. Um, but yeah, that is how you build a perpetual motion water wheel machine and connect it to something such as uh, a pump stack. Yep. Um, Checks out. Yeah, n n fairly easy. And it takes a little bit of maintenance once every year or two. I'll need to, uh, this will all dry up and it'll stop running. At that point, I'll need to refill this reservoir and just kick it off again. I think that there's this problem with Dwarf Fortress where a lot of people overthink things. Mm. Like, I, I've had so many people tell me, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm too scared to try power. It's like, but it's like the simplest system in the world. You connect things, <laughs> thing, thing, go boom. <laughs> it's very simple. It's like, and it'll either it'll work or it won't. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, you, like, pull it apart and put it back together again. <laughs> Until it Very does simple. work. Indeed. And if you end up, as long as you're a little bit careful about making sure you've put down stuff like doors and stuff, um, if this accidentally floods, then you just abandon that area and go build it somewhere else until you do get it that's working. That's the oopsie room. You yeah, that's the oopsie, that the oopsie room. room exists. <laughs> plenty or you of drain space. it and then you have a farm. It's great. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, so why is the farm right next to the forges? Because that's where <laughs> the water was. <laughs> now, uh, another way to do this that we've—I um, was looking at with the video that you've got on YouTube—is mm -hmm. uh, using instead of having a reservoir that slowly drains down and needs to be refilled, uh, you have got a, a YouTube video showing how to do this but with um, with a, uh, taking it straight from a stream let me just yep. bring that up one could say the, the way that it's intended to be done instead of like just yeah. kind of almost abusing physics in this case <laughs> <laughs> let's see I might need to swap my screen share with you um, I can see it on the stream can you, side of things. You wouldn't you get a better? I mean, I, I'm I'll thinking have about delay stream on this delay. Side, but... Yeah, let me stop the screen share and I'll swap it over to the stream. Yeah, that's the one. So that you can see then which where we are. This the delay then will be a lot. Uh, faster so Yuppers. i've got the video at the point where you've put down um a some a bridge across the top of the river and you've put some walls in if i yep. just play now are you happy to talk about what's going on what you're building here and how yep yep 
Right, you, cool. you could also set the video to run at like half speed so I don't need to like oh, run that's a good idea. at the normal <clears throat> brain pace that I would in a video recording. Yeah, I was going to tell you to just um, tell me where to stop. So if I run at half speed, that yep, should, that should be, be about good. right. Yeah, cool. Right, let's So play. the the reason I built a wall on this thing in this video is because I, I what's the word I'm looking for here? I didn't want things to be able to climb in. So it's yep. more of a defensive structure. But the way the actual setup works, uh, which you can probably skip forward to where the actual digging of the thing is or where the actual tunnel is. Um, but uh, the actual structure itself, the, the kind of goal is you, you channel the water down into a basically a constructed river underground, which then if it's stone, if you smooth the very edge of the map, because you can dig one tile up to the edge of the map, you can't remove the tile at the edge of the map, but you can dig right up to the edge of the map. Mm -hmm. When you hit the tile on the edge of the map, you can then smooth it and then carve holes into the wall, which is the fortification walls or holes. Um, and then the water will actually just flow off the map, thus giving you a underground river that uh, produces power. Um, in the video here, I'm using a brook, I think is what they're called, mm -hmm. which is the type of water where you can walk across it. Um, they do have seven of seven deep water, which is the most amount of water you can have in a spot. Aside from that, there's a false floor layer on top of it, so dwarves can walk across them safely because they're supposedly only ankle deep. I I don't understand how dwarven <laughs> physics works. Yeah, yeah. I think that all dwarves are just Jesus and they just walk across the water, but... Um, <laughs> Essentially, the, the 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 way that this this system works is it diverts it down into a constructed area where the dwarves can then use to get power from it. Do you want me to skip it forwards a bit further? Yeah, probably. Let's have a look at. Because I start dig, I start channeling at a point because I'm just channeling down, 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 down. Or shall I speed the playback? Well, you can probably go back up to full speed now that I've done the yeah, intro cool. bit. Oh yeah, true. That's a good way of thinking of it. Haunted Putty is just... Uh, Brooke has stones that you can skip across. Yeah. <laughs> but essentially what happens is the dwarves come out here and they dig this out and then... Um, I can't remember if I've already if I've already like designated all the channelings at this point because a little while ago that I recorded this in a exhausted haze of oh gosh the game just came out <laughs> yeah 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 and I'll put a link to this video in chat in a moment and also for people watching on YouTube we'll put a link to this video in the description as well yeah. there'll be a link to uh, to Blind's channels in in all the places too. So, so at this point, I'm now diverting the river, and I'm starting to channel downwards, and each layer goes down a level. Um, although I'm like colliding with uh -huh. stuff that I've already dug out, which yeah, I'm gonna yeah, have yeah. To go in, and I'm going to have to fix that. But as long as you have like a, just a long coherent ramp, I mean, you could use stairs the way Sal does, um, but I don't know. I like water to flow to a place, so yeah, and ramps so are... gems. So I'm cutting those out too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I can't actually remember if I got the gems out of there. I do re recall thinking, I'm like, yeah, I should like cut those and then like, can't remember if I actually did anything with them. This map was very mean and has aquifers everywhere oh, at God. different layers all over the place. So that's what the little water tiles right, are for. Right. I, was actually, I think I actually dig through an aquifer as part of this at one point. So it starts f filling early. That sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. I did watch Which... this video um, a couple of weeks ago, but I haven't watched it since. Yeah. I mean, I watched it when I made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was... Uh, well, I, said, like, was I don't go. remember most of this, mm. but I actually just finished this series. The whole goal of oh. the series was to get a, uh, a noble, a baron. And uh, I got it, and a bunch of people are sad. <laughs> like, oh, no, my favorite show just ended. I'm like, well, I'll do another one <laughs> in a week or two. It was 14 episodes. Yeah. So yes, anybody, if you're looking for a, a current and beginner, well, not even just beginner friendly, but useful tutorial series, but that is also beginner friendly. Um, yeah, check out Blind's tutorial series. Yeah, I've, I've hit the aquifer at this point, so it's yeah, going to start yeah. flooding. 
But um, kind of a pro tip, if you dig one layer above the aquifer and channel down into it, it doesn't cancel the, the digging. Also, um, if you're trying to dig through an aquifer, which I don't think I knew about at the point when I was recording this, if you're trying to dig through an aquifer, a really easy way to do it is to uh, switch from the like stamp option where you can like make a square and designate it and swap to the brush option where you just have a single tile and then you can just hold the mouse down on that tile and they'll automatically redesignate re it because the dwarf that just dug the last piece out is going to be the closest dwarf. They're going to dig out the next one. Oh. So essentially what I'm doing here is I've Hang got on. a trench it's, it's, that I'm Explain digging. that again, Blind. I, I, could, I could show it when I'm looking at my floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please um, do. But essentially what I'm doing here is I'm digging out a trench and then right next to the trench, I'm digging a walkway, which is going to be where we're going to connect the power. Mm -hmm. But uh, to, to explain the idea again, so you know how like you can click and drag a square? Yeah. You can also uh, click the little brush tool down uh -huh. in the digging thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The brush tool, you can just like tap the mouse and it'll like select one square. Yeah, right? yeah. If you just hold down on the square that they're digging on, the one after they're digging, if there's water close by and it's automatically canceling the job every time, uh -huh. um, it'll automatically designate the next square right away uh -huh. and that dwarf will just keep digging. Uh -huh. So the cancellation will never go through and the dwarf won't have time to register that their job's been canceled. Uh -huh. So if you just have one dwarf and you're trying to dig through a like a dig below a creek or something and yeah, you want to yeah, do it yeah. real quick or through fire or whatever it's a very efficient way to do it Ooh, yeah if you could give us a demonstration of that when we go have a look at your fortress that'd be great yep well probably what i'll do once we go over to my fortress is i'll show you my fort and then i'm going to jump to a different save somewhere yeah i could sure. actually jump into weather mountains here this one um and show you that because i, I don't want to do too much progress on my fort uh, yeah yeah i understand that <laughs> indeed but yeah, uh, then essentially, I'll, you could probably skip ahead at this point. Um, at this point, it's just me kind of struggling with the aquifer for a little bit because I, I didn't know about that setup. But uh -huh. I'm channeling up into the aquifer so they don't cancel the jobs. Um, and then at, once this whole thing is dug out, it's going to get to the end of this um, area down here. And then when it hits the wall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth uh, the end of the wall um, because I'm digging from the lower layer where we're... We, I, I think I had the wrong tool selected there. Yep. Um, and uh, then when we hit the when we hit the wall at the end, uh, I'm gonna smooth it, and then fortify it, and then that's going to be, um, you know, the space for the water to leave. And I also, I think I was talking about digging at the time, but I queued up a wall at the very top mm -hmm. so that the when the water hits the bottom. I, I don't want it to lose all pressure, but I don't want it to flow out onto the road. I want it to hit the bottom and then flow straight. Yeah. Because I, I know that I'm only going to be letting in two tiles of water, so there's going to be a small enough amount of water flowing down into there that it's not going to be a huge issue. Um, and I know it'll drain fast enough, but what I don't know is will the water bubble over or, like, splash into places that I don't want it, so yeah. I put that wall there to stop uh -huh. it from doing that. Let's see, I think we're back down into the water here, are we? Yep, and I've installed two floodgates at the top, which I'm connecting a lever to. Uh-huh. And so once the the floodgates are connected to the lever, then I can uh, channel through the top, which I think the video skips, I can't remember. Or it skips the part where it's doing that. Sure. <laughs> Wish me <key. laughs> I, I, I never name things logical that. things. <laughs> Chat ban me from naming things because I'm totally uninventive. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, I think I, I think I, I don't know if I can take credit for this, but I started referring to the caverns as the basement, and now I see everybody talking about, about <laughs> the caverns as the basement. It's like, oh, there's lots of monsters in the basement, like completely unrelated to anything that I've done. Like somebody I've never seen before on like the subreddit calling the caverns the basement, <laughs> and it's like. Well, I think I started a trend. Did I make a meme? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is where you couldn't, where the kids insisted on playing in the uh, so in I the water the room. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and it's like, what's the chance that the dwarf's going to build the wall from the wrong side? <laughs> uh, pretty high. <laughs> but. But yeah. We we saved it. Yeah. Turns out it's quicker to just build around them than it is to, <laughs> make to move them out. <laughs> Right, and then I dig right up next to it, and mm -hmm. then I channel down from the layer above to cut out the walls. I did my damnedest to explain this part effectively, but some people are still confused in the YouTube comments about how I did it, so can't teach everybody, I suppose. Indeed. And then 
I probably curse at the child, unlock the, uh, the, the floodgates and then close them again. Kind of demonstrate the floodgates working. Move up to the layer above and channel down. Have you noticed a, a problem with the brooks where if you stop the water supply, like if you were to close your floodgates afterwards, uh, that it, the water pressure doesn't build back up again? Um, I don't think I've stopped a water supply for one before. Right, okay. Yeah, I've diverted them partially, but... I've... Have you noticed that rivers have no uh, sprite for a drained riverbed? No, I hadn't. It's just black. Because <laughs> <laughs> I learned that. They look very strange. <laughs> and then here I, I, I then build on top of all of these spaces mm -hmm. so that um, nothing could climb down. Yep. Although I think I built walls. Uh, do I go around the outside? Yeah, man, I would go around the outside and put floors on that. No. Oh, no, maybe I do. Yes, I think I do. Yeah, there we go. So I, I place floor tiles, and then I put a wall, wall tiles on that uh, side on the right there yeah. to seal the whole thing up. I was, watching, I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. You, you watch back at some content you've made, and you've thought, why did I do it the difficult way? I could have made this much easier. I need to delete this like four times. I think I also recorded this before the game was out too. So. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so like, I I didn't have like I. Behind the scenes, I I, I got the game a, a couple of days early, uh -huh. and I was DMing Clinodev whenever something bothered me. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. To the point where. <laughs> There was one point where I couldn't figure out how to delete walls because I couldn't, I didn't put two and two together that like yeah, the mining tool I with the stairs to, on it had that. I asked that exact same question of Kleinadev. <laughs> and, and he's just like, don't worry, you're not the first person to ask me this. And also <laughs> I had to ask Tarn this same question. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I feel this bad now. All right, then I pull the lever and then the water flew. Mm -hmm. All right, flow down. Just like that meme where he screamed, it do go down. <laughs> and it go down. And down. I keep pausing. And I'm pausing. And it keeps flowing. Water's pretty traumatic looking when it's got like rocks being pushed by it. It's yeah. like, oh god. Right, and then it flows down into the little room at the end and it doesn't splash out onto the walkways and it fills the whole thing up and flows off the bottom of the map. And then you can install water mm -hmm. wheels on it. Do you show us the bottom of the map where you have a house? So the where you've got it flowing off the bottom of the map through the fortifications that you've carved. The fortifications are not at the trench level, but they're at the level above the trench level. Is that right? Nope, they're they're on the trench well, level. Oh, they're on the trench level. Yeah, the the ramps in front of it make it. Oh yeah, actually, just, yeah. <laughs> you zoom in down there. Uh, actually, yeah, I can see them. See all the boulders Let getting me shoved. Let quickly just pause the video there. So it's here is right at the edge of the map. Yes, yeah, so that's the the last tile of the map, and you've carved fortifications into there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's then flowing off the edge of the map. Yeah. So what happened? I don't think you showed this on the video. What happens to the stream above? Does it... Are you completely diverting the whole stream? No. Nope. I would need to divert three tiles <clears throat> to divert the whole ah, stream. Ah, right. Because it's a three tile wide. All of it. Ah. And this is only a one tile wide diversion, I think. No, two, two tile wide by right. diversion. So yeah, no, it's a, it's three tiles to four tiles wide. I would need to like double the width of it to divert right. the whole thing. So no, it's still flowing. Yeah. So if uh, if somebody wanted to drain a river for purposes while you built something where a river currently is that's a this is pumps. a way to do it yeah <laughs> be easier i suppose you could do it this way but i would use yeah. pumps just build like three pumps on top or a pump on each tile on top of the river or brook and then uh have it divert off down the side of the map like this setup just at the very beginning of the brook and it will mm -hmm. just go whoosh off the map I have to go AFK for a quick second. I really need to use the restroom. Yeah, no worries. We'll just pause your video for a sec because we're getting into the power part now. Yep, I'll be back in a moment. Yeah, no worries. 
and uh, yeah, in the meantime, let's just have a look and see if we've got any questions in chat. <laughs> Could the aquifers be used to fill the trench rather than needing the brook? In this particular setup that Blind's got here, there probably wouldn't be... He's going through a light aquifer and he's not using quite enough... Or he hasn't got enough aquifer exposed to be able to provide enough of a flow to power all of those water wheels. Um, but the next thing that we're going to have a look at is a fortress where Blind does exactly that. He's using aquifers to uh, to power water wheels instead. And um, But I, I haven't seen that setup. I know it's one he's been streaming recently, but I haven't caught up on those streams yet. I've snuck back in. Hello. So yeah, the question was, can you use aquifer? Could could you have used an aquifer? Um, use yes. the aquifer that you have here. I was saying that's actually my preferred setup is using aquifers for this. For the setup that you've got here, I was suggesting that because you've only exposed a small amount of the aquifer, you wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to do it with the small amount of the aquifer that you've exposed. But if you exposed a bigger area of the aquifer, you could. Yeah, and I'll show you how to do that mm, in, in the next video. sizzle tongs yeah. a little later. Right. Let's... Although um, I will also show you my frustrations of discovering a different location of the aquifer after I'd done it, but <laughs> cool. um, th this uh, and then here I'm just you know I've constructed three water wheels and this will uh -huh. equal up to 300 power minus the 30 for the uh, for the gears plus you know like four I guess or eight I think it would be for axles between them. Of course, you could just connect the water wheels directly to axles. That's also an option. Mm -hmm. So. And I think it's worth us pointing out as well that um, the water has to be flowing and a waterfall doesn't count as flowing. So you can't use water mm -hmm. flowing down Z levels. It's got to be flowing. That's falling, not level. flowing, clearly. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible that something attacks through the fortifications on the edge? Of the map? No. They, they, they wouldn't be able to get in that way. I suppose that there wouldn't be a full tile for them, a full tile of water for them to swim through, would there? Nope. No, they, they cannot enter through uh, fortifications at the edge of the map. Is this a save on your video? Yes. Ah, right, cool. I was just thinking, because I've got the game in the background, I was just like, ha uh, have I left the game running and this is... Yeah, just wondering for a second there. Uh, let's get past that. I can't remember. I don't think I actually connect anything to the power in this episode. You might have connected a mill or something. Maybe. I can't. I can't yeah. remember. But we've got see to that the... Or the next episode. Yeah. But yes, you can see there the the water's flowing. The power's being generated. Working. Oh, one other eccentricity mm. about waterfalls is while you can't use waterfalls to power water wheels, you can pump water out of waterfalls. Oh, which really? Is extraordinarily dangerous, I've learned. <laughs> I've never tried. It's it never occurred funny. to me to try. <laughs> if you put pumps around the waterfalls, you can, in fact, pump water. And that is what? In its mid fall? Yep. <laughs> I because mean, it's just falling vertically down. And you, it, the pumps will catch them. I wonder if that would work for magma as well. I mean, why I've you would want to, I don't know. But I've always wanted to try filling minecarts by literally launching a minecart through, through a, a waterfall. Lava fall. Yeah. Or a waterfall. Um, but every single time I've tried to do that, my own hubris has gotten the better of me, and I, I, it's fallen apart before I've finished it. <laughs> Oh, right. So that's how you can <clears throat> divert a river. Um, so shall we switch over to looking at how you've used an aquifer? And would you mind giving us a fortress tour as well? Of uh, sizzle times? Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. All right, one second. What I want to do just before I move away from your video, I want to put a, a link in chat to your video. And uh, Maz is asking what the pink color in the item trade menu means. My question to you, are you trading with elves? 
because it either means the elves will be mad if you sell it to them, or it's contraband uh, by a noble, would be my guess. Let me turn my game. So no one you can see it. Okay, one second. I've got your stream. I just need to bring it up onto... onto stream. Things are a little hot right now, which will make sense in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me just full screen um, this. There we go. Yeah, it's it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not flooding my fort with lava. You're flooding your fort with lava. It's okay. It's draining. Don't worry about it. It will drain. I swear. <laughs> um... Um, so, anyway. yeah, should we start with Fortress Tour? <laughs> what, um, what is going on? Uh, well, the elves attacked first, okay? It was, it was their fault. <laughs> they did attack me. Uh, they're mostly charcoal now. Um, <laughs> actually, I, think, I think it was actually the humans that attacked me this time. Um, <laughs> But uh, you remember how I said I just like to dump lava on things? Well, yeah. I dump lava on things. <laughs> so this is this is where I dump lava on things. Um, it, the lava comes from down here, which mm -hmm. comes from down here. Uh huh. So you're uh, pumping up from the magma sea, yeah. Yes. Well, not from the magma sea. We're oh, pumping from this. Oh, it's a volcano. Spout right. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's it's a partially formed volcano. Yeah. It's, it's not quite the full volcano ordeal um mm. see i i'm very you, you seem to be a very cautious player when you play yeah. dwarf fortress <laughs> i i know that things can go wrong in the way that i build them and i don't care, care. indeed <laughs> like that's half the fun for me it's mm. like well if if there isn't like a very easy way that i could screw up this setup and just like burn the entire fort I mean, what's the point of trying? Um, <laughs> this is going to be a trade entrance at some point because they apparently can't get around this corner, which I think is their own driving inabilities. But um, this is going to be a trade entrance pretty uh -huh. soon so that I can actually trade because we are the mountain home. I oh, will be right, careful yeah. not to scroll too far down um, to avoid some spoilers. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Also, there's the congratulations. You're now the mountain home. Um, so this is where the, the lava drains. People were asking about using aquifers as power. Uh huh. So this is an aquifer. Um, I go the layer below it, and I walk around and I channel up into it. So this is one layer below the aquifer. This is the layer with the aquifer. So if I click right. on this mine thing, you can see all this water here. Uh -huh. Even though there's no water actually touching these tiles, this is the aquifer. So I go one layer below, and I use the ramp up tool like this uh -huh. to channel up into it. Um, and then get the ceiling plus all walls dribbling water out until it gets deep enough that the dwarves have trouble digging and at which point I say, okay, that's enough water. And then it'll flow down into this and then this all has flow. Um, and then this goes all the way around here and powers these water wheels. Uh -huh. um, and this one is suspended because I'm still constructing it. Um, and then it flows down here and flows off the side. I also have this one over here, but turns out this aquifer was very small. Right. Um, and was just in this tiny little mountain here. So uh, it wasn't producing enough water, but this is the same sort of setup. Um, and then it flows and falls down this stairwell here, mm -hmm. uh, down to a very similar setup that you just saw in the last video, where the water then flows here, takes a hard left, and then flows off the side of the map mm -hmm. right here because it was flowing too quick on this side. So I plugged the whole setup and flooded it off the side right there. Um, now, this is, all in all, is if I unpause the game, is generating uh, 2,500, mm -hmm. 2,700 power for the bottom half. Um, and then the top half is generating um, a significantly lower amount, 500. Now, you'll notice that there's six here. Yeah. Well, this one apparently doesn't have any flow. Ah. Neither does this one. Um, because the water hits this and bounces back, which apparently oh. cancels flow, according to some very smart people in my Twitch chat. Um, I also discovered this. Now, you'll notice that there's lava here, right? Yeah. There was an oopsie early on, and I filled this whole thing up with lava. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We cleaned it up. Nobody died. <laughs> that I'm aware of. Um, but it also then caused this to bubble over and flood, which caused a bunch of obsidian. Now, you'll notice that there's an obsidian wall here. Yes. This is still working. Uh -huh. This wheel is still spinning. 
the axle is still spinning with a gear assembly in a wall of obsidian. So it's actually embedded in a wall? Yeah. Um, I, I don't if, think that's intended. I wonder if... I mean, so the wall's indestructible. I mm -hmm. wonder if um, that would be a way of preventing like a, a building destroyer from entering through the hole left by a gear assembly if they destroyed that the gear assembly. That is my assumption. Yeah, I would imagine What's so. What's even better about this is you could actually see the exact spot where the lava leaked yeah. out because I forgot <laughs> to put a wall there and now it's subsidiary. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so <laughs> that then goes up here and powers this, which, you know, goes to here. Uh -huh. um, and because this pump, this setup here, is powered by the lower uh, pumps which is connected somewhere? Where is it connected? I know it's connected in here. Oh, there it is. Uh, which is connected via here to the lower layer of pumps. Uh -huh. And this is just perpetually pumping. This is always pumping. So the result is this is just over full with too much lava, yeah. right? And then when I pull the lever to turn this pump stack on, uh -huh. it launches out here and fires like halfway out here. <laughs> like it gets a lot of distance. Um, it's under so Which is pressure. great because it's filling up my front yard moat. The problem is my front yard moat has no drainage set up currently. Right. <laughs> so it's slowly getting kind of hot in my fort. As you can see, this is actually is like two Z levels deep and this entire bridge is under lava right now. Right. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, it doesn't actually, actually a problem. it doesn't show it as being under lava, but it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can yep. see in so the, this whole area is that. like one to two Z levels under lava, uh, although it will drain out here and dry off on these corners. The reason I have mm -hmm. these flat areas right here is so that the lava can bubble up and over. And then when it gets to just one deep, it'll cool off right. and disappear. So this will drain itself slowly. Mm -hmm. um, I should probably get a better drainage solution. <laughs> um, yeah. And then over here, we, we uh, up top here, we have this with our guard chicken. Uh huh. Um, named Burr, who notifies us of any invaders who's injured. Uh, probably get hit by an arrow. I'm sorry, Burr. Uh, anyway, that's that's fine. I also up here you can actually see that the lava is over top of the bridges, but not here. Oh yeah. Which is kind of neat. Um, and then if I fly down this way, uh, you can see the big old pile of bodies, which we crushed with that drawbridge. Uh huh. Uh, it's not very ceremonial, but hey, it's fine. Uh, we have the place where the dogs make more dogs, which yep. is great. Uh, we have the place where the soldiers get sprayed with nice water. Uh huh. Um, because we use a uh, like mist generator setup here, mm -hmm. um, and this setup is also significantly larger over here. Um, you do not need these to keep dwarves happy, but I like them. Essentially, the way they work is they transport uh, three of seven water in a circle. One bucket's worth is two of seven, so I usually use two buckets, and then it just spins it in circles around here, it falls onto the statue, and if dwarves touch the puddle of water, they'll spread mud around. There's a ghost right there. I should probably deal with that. Um, that and then they they, they will... <laughs> the, the pump then picks up the water and then spins it in a circle and sprays mist off of all these so these dwarves are happy, even though there's a ghost in the tavern. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I haven't um, seen the ghost sprites yet. No, you're better at this game than me, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, I... Um... <laughs> more efficient. Um, oh, the ghost also, is they, stressed. Kosoth Metal Jail here. And he's gelded. Um, is blissful after sleeping in a very good bedroom and ambivalent remembering remembering gaining a sibling. <laughs> but was contemptuous upon dwelling upon getting into an argument. Sir, you're dead. Um, live to Learn to party a little bit. Um, <laughs> the, then, then, then down here we just have some like random stuff that I've dug out. Mm. This is uh, for... Uh, our, our stone workers guild. I need to. This is going to be a farming district eventually when I make sure. it look pretty and unugly. It currently it's just ugly. Uh, this is still my kind of ugly tavern because I haven't finished the outside of it yet. Mm. But ooh, what are, you, what are you? What are you making those tables and chairs out of? They look oh gold. gold. I was gonna say that looks mm -hmm. so nice. <laughs> and then there's uh, more gold tables mm -hmm. uh, and then gold statues and uh, gold instruments, mm. earthenware instruments, more gold tables. Um, then over here we have the Hall of Dead that died, um, making the uh, queen's t or uh, the queen's throne mm -hmm. uh, for the mountain home. And then this is the the king and queen's quarters. Um, and then down here, I'm very proud of this room. This is a multi Z level um, bedroom slash throne room. So we've got uh -huh. the, the two thrones right there, and then the other one that they haven't gotten rid of yet. And then the the dining room set up for the king and queen. Um, then there's a couple spears here left over from the last time the, the cavern dwellers got in. And uh, this is where we, uh, I guess, create um, like dwarf 
Dwarf Chef America or something. Mm -hmm. um, this is one gigantic like dining hall as well as one gigantic um, uh, cook's guild. Mm. So that was kind of the theme of this fort is we cook stuff. And then there's the ex the auxiliary ki kitchen because, you know, we, we needed extra food, apparently. Um, and uh, then the way, I, the way I've been building these bedrooms uh, keeps blowing people's minds um, because I'm not laying down these walls individually. The way I do it is, well, I can do it up here and show you. Uh, the, way, the way I build these rooms is I um, go to the constructions um, and then I select material after placement, then just draw a big square. Let's just say salt rocks because that's what I've been using for all of this and then go into here and then I go to the delete tool and I do this mm -hmm. ah nice so you can very quickly like queue up these more complicated constructions without like you know running into the issue of man I'm getting carpal tunnel from just like clicking all of this you can just that's you know, a really nice tip for there and then get rid of this there you go now you got a little housing block and I'll just build that I mean I used um, to in classic um, I can't remember whether it was because I was using DF Hack. I used you, I would do a big square when I was doing a square wall around the fortress or something, mm -hmm. um, and then delete the middle. I never actually mm -hmm. thought to do much more complicated rooms like that. That's uh, that's really nice. That's that's how I've queued up all of these constructions. Mm -hmm. Everything here is done that way. Um, and then down here, uh, we have our angry noodle. Aha. Uh -huh. He's very angry. Um, yeah. Clumsy and low stamina. It's kind of sad. Maybe one day we'll get them a gym. Our angry noodle um, is a giant thread python with thin wings of stretched skin, and it undulates rhythmically. Its black scales are small and close set. Beware its webs. Um, and then we have um, not a dinosaur, um, also named by chat. <laughs> and uh, it, is, it is a great feathered dimetrodon. Uh, it, it has large mandibles, and it squirms and fidgets. Uh, its eyes glow orange, and it also has webs. And unfortunately, I misestimated this. I hoped that they would be close enough together that they would shoot webs at each other. Um, but instead, I have to put, um, let's just call this, uh, I don't know, sad piggy uh, <laughs> in, in the middle. Um, and sad piggy is sad because piggy is gelded, but also is guilty because they're confined. They're chained up. Um, <laughs> and so they live there on a chain. If they weren't on a chain, they'd run away in fear, which is yeah. suboptimal. Um, so, or I'd accidentally crush them with the drawbridge. <laughs> um, so we lower these drawbridges with this lever and then lock this door and then they fill this thing up with silk and then we, we have great Forgotten Beast brand silk. Yeah. Um, and then over here I have a, uh, a, uh, Ooh, a minecart. Just, just talking about Forgotten Beasts, have you noticed an increase in the number of Forgotten Beasts? Uh, in this world, yeah, because I have savagery at maximum. So on my world, I haven't, I've got uh, savagery set at default, um, but mm -hmm. I've had 17 forgotten beasts so far. Yeah, um, I think that's probably to do with the cavern agitation. Because before yeah. the way they worked is, the, well, you'd only get the ones that are in the vicinity of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now if you're building in the caverns, it like it widens your vicinity, I guess. Mm. So more of them realize you're there. Uh -huh. um, then I have my very advanced automated yeah. garbage disposal system. Um, I have a minecart here that gets automatically filled up with refuse from this uh, stockpile here. Mm -hmm. So they, they dump it in there so they don't need to see it. And then uh, when it's full, or I think every 90 days, they kick it down here and it goes all the way down here, 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 and then um, whoops, slams into the ground here and hits that and catapults everything into the <laughs> lava. Nice. Um, and then a dwarf comes down here and picks it up. Nobody's died on this setup yet, so hmm. I think it's perfectly safe. Yeah, yeah. Um, although it's nowhere near as dangerous as my other minecart track, but there's a ghost there as well. Really. I have a lot of ghosts I need to go through and deal with. I've been focusing on uh, setting up a mountain home, not yeah. keeping my dwarves happy yeah, as yeah. late. Um, and then uh, down, down here we have the, the, the very ugly forge that needs to be beautified. Um, and then we have this. Uh, this is the very dangerous minecart route yeah. that I talked about. I and uh, for those of you that are super sensitive for spoilers, you might want to avert your eyes. <laughs> um, I mean, there's... this this stream is aimed much more at um, the experienced players, so I don't think we'll I don't think we're giving away any spoilers. But uh... I'm just trying to figure out why the Duke is walking up that minecart track. Oh, it's not a very safe place to be walking there, bud. They do get kicked down. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, so so down here, yeah. uh, that that's that's the end of the minecart. So gems get put in there, uh -huh. and get put in there. Over here, we have even more friends. Um, so this is Steve. <laughs> And this is Sharon, um, and then the unnamed uh, 
purple clean, the three-eyed brute. Uh -huh. uh, these are demons, and I was very excited to get a breeding pair, and I was hoping they'd make babies. I even gave them nest boxes, but no luck so far. Um, they've been in there for like three years, and they're generally just kind of bored. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe at some point we'll, we'll have some more luck. Um, this is my fully steel-clad uh, soldier down here. And then a little further down here, um, we have this area. Um, many soldiers and dwarves have died in this. And this goes <laughs> all the way down to about here, where we are still uh, chipping away at adamantine. Uh, pro tip, if you are mining through adamantine, okay, um, smooth it first, like you see right here, mm -hmm. and then fortify it. Mm -hmm. It lets you see what's behind the wall. So if you are digging deep, 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 and you want to uh, channel through all kinds of fun adamantine, smooth it first, fortify it, and then you can see what's on the other side. If there happens to be a fun lava pocket or a water pocket, it'll give the dwarves enough time to jump back and probably not burn to death. Mm -hmm. And if there's a demon behind it, then you have time to station your military down. So if you you know smooth everything and fortify everything before uh, you dig through it, you can very slowly and meticulously cut through these things almost entirely safely. Um, and... Uh, I'm not sure how your body got there, dwarf. <laughs> that's through a w what? Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> so that's uh, that's 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 the fun spire. And uh, then Very this nice. is uh, instant death if you get smacked by it. But I guess yeah. like there's also no gems down there right now, so it's not that dangerous to be running up and down this. But I'm still trying to figure out why they're running up and down it. Anyway, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's, I think I've seen. I think I watched you problems. building a little bit of that. Would you mind just indulging me a second? You you had some really fancy walls. I think they're golden walls. Have you got some Probably. walls built out of gold somewhere? Um, up here? It's oh, yeah, those. Built out of gold. Is that gold? Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> yeah. No, this fort has a surplus of gold. There's, yeah. there's a lot of it. Um, I mean, if I, if I go down to... Okay, it's it's right yeah it's down here um this is uh where we trapped uh not a dinosaur uh, -huh. uh this is all gold all the way along wow here. and this is on sparse too so like that's all gold that's all i need to go back down here and mine more of this at some point so my although i think i have like 800 unused gold bars wow right now. the fortresses i've played since the steam release i've only ever come across like little small pockets of gold i haven't come across any major seams so mm -hmm. i've made gold statues and you know, yep. a bit of gold's been made in some artifact weapons that sort of thing i hadn't realized just how nice the furniture and the walls look and and stuff and i'm looking at it, go oh and now i want gold i've been kind of almost dismissing gold as just another a shiny Crafting thing tool. sure yeah you know high value thing to make things out of yeah, I hadn't realized just how, how good it looks. Gold and brass are my favorite materials mm. to make into uh, furniture. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else interesting I could really show here. I like doing multi-layer forts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So where you've you can got... kind of see things from the layer above. I'm, I'm basically in mid-beautification right now. Like, sure. Um, tomorrow when I'm going to be streaming this fort, I'm going to be, like, dealing with the ghosts and making things pretty because we're the mountain home now, right? So now that we're the mountain home, I can actually like, yeah, not like worry about just trying to get mountain home for a bit and actually do stuff. Also, uh -huh. you were talking about a lot of forgotten beasts. We yeah, had yeah. eighteen forgotten beasts in one season. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Um, which is why the caverns are completely sealed off. And there's also like a bunch of really angry ant people in here. I have. I've heard a lot of people talking about seeing ant people. I haven't seen any ant people in any of my fortresses so far. I've had to you know load of ant fish person? people. Each ant person uh, carries three shields. Oh wow! Yeah, they're a great source ah. of materials if you can kill them. Like, look at this one. Like, one, two, three. Someone it's in like my copper, chat steel, was... and copper. But <laughs> someone in my and chat steel. was saying that they had uh, over they had an invasion of about eighty ant people come through one of their caverns. Um, also, something that that's worth noting uh, that I ran into with this fort is we stopped getting migrants. Um, yeah. Because we hit the death cap. Ah. Because um, as effective as this is, <laughs> um, it will kill a lot of things very quickly. Um, so I actually cleaned up the death count with uh, DF hack. So if I go over here and I go to others, um, and I rather dead and missing, the only 
things that are really dead in here, except for the, all the stuff that I just killed, mm -hmm. um, is uh, stuff that was killed. All, all the, Most of the stuff up here at the top is stuff that is named. Um, I'm going to need to clean again pretty soon here because there's a lot of, like, you know, crundles and sure. various other things. I don't even know where that giant cave toad came from. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this this was the last siege was just all of these elves. We're all naked now because their clothing got burned. Do you know what the what the limit is on the death cap? Three thousand. Right. So once you get once you hit three thousand, you can hit in like five six years. Yeah. Once you've hit it, so when and that does that include things that have died around the? It's only things that yep. are noticeable, isn't it? Um, so nope. if you, it's oh, anything okay. that shows up in the dead and missing screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So livestock, enemies your own dwarves it also counts living entities so if you have like a hundred visitors mm -hmm. that'll get you to that um but uh after much complaining at putnam putnam says that if it's not going to make the whole game explode they're going to change it to like ten thousand and also make it auto delete so <laughs> um <laughs> instead of like the instead of just stopping getting visitors entirely it'll be like an ebb and flow thing yeah because i am of the opinion that using df hack to fix a thing is not a good game design choice <laughs> DF hack should be an external tool for modders and people who want to play in weird sandbox mode and cheat, not a mandatory tool to play the game. <laughs> Which is an unpopular opinion for some reason, but that's my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, that's a uh, mm. sizzle tongs. It's very sizzly. Um, the fortress, the f the forest on the surface here burns down twice a year. <laughs> so. <laughs> Which doesn't actually impact your frame rate at all. It's only if there's a dwarf stuck out there. And there's been a couple of times we've had like a dwarf up here or something while this forest fire is coming. We had to get to watch them like jump through the trees and like jump down <laughs> on the other side. It's like, oh boy, white knuckles here. Oh, but... so that's. Uh, have you had any problems with the game spamming you with cave in messages as it burns I the trees? I disabled that function. Oh, okay. I was going to say that's. Um, um, that was a. A thing. Um, also, I found that trees only burn once. Oh. Unless you chop them down. So, the, this layer burnt the first time. Yeah. And then this one never did. Okay. Um, so, this one is all still burned. Uh huh. Whereas there's like leaves on the tops of the trees, which is very confusing. But now they don't catch on fire when it burns. So. Huh. Hmm. I'm pretty sure. Um, it, it's been a while since I set a world on fire, but I've done it a couple of times. <laughs> Take that out of context. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it's because you've got a dragon on the surface that's spitting fire at things, and sure, you're going to get a world on fire. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a couple of um, accidents with, with magma. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that, especially with the magma, I it did keep on reigniting the world. I thought the trees kept on catching fire, so I wonder if that's changed. Or do There's you know been some that weird something? changes made to trees? Yeah. I mean, I, I know for a fact that trees are the reason we don't have backwards compatibility with version 47. Right. Because Tarn had to rewrite trees, which is really funny to me. <laughs> um. But uh, this is Weather Mountains. Okay. That, that fortress that you saw me digging around in the yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, notice how close we are to the caverns. Like, I missed it by, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, which was kind of funny when I was, like, building that bag. It's like, oh, hey, there's caverns. Like, right there. <laughs> wow. Um, so, yeah, this, this is Weather Mountains. This is what this whole setup ended up looking like. Um, I later connected these two right here. Uh -huh. um, and then connected this up to here uh, to make a little... Uh, entryway yeah. mist generator so everybody walking in gets a shower uh, which they love mm -hmm. and uh it's 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 you know it's now technically a city we've got a noble um so this is where the noble lives and we haven't cleaned the rocks out yet and we probably won't um but uh this save file is actually up on the dwarf fortress data or file depot mm -hmm. um so if people want it the they save can go is connected play. to the last episode are you um, okay to show us the trick you were you were describing, where you hold down? Um, yes, that's yeah. that's. The, I knew I needed to open this thing for something, but I yeah, couldn't yeah, remember yeah. what. I was about to ask you what I needed to do. <laughs> um, so, if you are digging underwater, right? So let's just use this 
Creek here mm. as an example, right? So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I don't know, just say we're going to make a way to walk from here to over here, right? Yeah. So we're going to dig down. Uh, maybe a little further over this way. We're going to go from like right here down one so I don't hit that walkway. I'm going to go from here down to here. And then we're going to go from here down to here. And then we're going to connect the two, right? Uh -huh. And then the game's going to be all like, yo, Damp why? Rock. Damp rock. There, there's damp rock, right? So yeah, now we yeah. just need to wait for the dwarves to go do the yeah. thing, which might take a minute. Um, but I do have plenty of miners, so we'll see if they go do that. Yeah. Although I could just, like, you know, remove them from doing other things and just be like, go do it quickly! <laughs> there we go. Magical. So now they're they're going to freak out about damp rock when they get to, what, like right there? Mm -hmm in the center. Mm -hmm. So the way I would do this is instead of, you know, using this tool, you use this tool right here. Mm -hmm. So I just hold the button down right here and then they're gonna cancel it on that side. And then it, can, it automatically redoes it. And there you go. Uh -huh. So I can now like dig up <clears> this <throat> way. Very much speeds up the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, they're not moving away to so the way I've managed it in the past is by digging out a large area and then redesignating as they cancel one bit, they're digging the bit next door and I re re redesignating the area that they've just cancelled. That's a mm -hmm. lot easier. Yep, that's the way I do it. Hmm, or at nice. least that's how I do it in this version. I mean, obviously, it's yeah, yeah. the older versions, but then you can just do that. There you go. Oh, that's very good. Now I got this extra little walkway here. But yeah, that's that's cool, pretty much cool. all I got for that. I guess we got wind power up next, right? Yeah, yeah. So for wind power, so do you know I just went to hit pause then to stop your game running. <laughs> do we want to swap back over to your game? Yeah, or? we'll swap back over okay. to mine. Let's just take this over there. I will end my screen share so you can mm -hmm. switch yours up again. There we go. You can see my fortress again. Yep. Good, good, good. Right. So, yeah, let's have a look at wind power. So my history with wind power is mm -hmm. sometime back in about version 44, I built a windmill just to see if I could. Then, just a single windmill. Uh, yeah. I Very can't remember windmill. what I had it do, but I remember I built one then. <laughs> Um, then in 2020 or 2021, it was, actually it was the fortress where I flooded the world with magma and the world kept on reigniting. It was that very same fortress. It was a fortress where I was doing all the things. <laughs> we had um, we had an encrusting industry, a clay industry, a uh, we did an, an everything. Um, it was like dabble with every single mechanic type fortress. And, uh, and I put a windmill on the roof. And because it had been so long since I'd done it, it was like, uh, I know, I know, I used to know, I know, yeah, I did know, I can't remember, can't remember. And I was like, hang on, I'm gonna have to look this up. Uh, it was one of those, so, and I haven't built another one since. So I've done it, I remember, it was always like, ah, oh, this doesn't quite work like that, need to fiddle with it, can't. So I remember it was fairly simple, the getting, because you used to have to put the mechanism underneath the windmill, making In the sure. Of the windmill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, making sure if you wanted the windmill on the surface, you had to raise, or if you wanted the mechanism on the surface, you needed to raise the windmill up, and then you needed to make sure that the dwarfs could get to the windmill to be able to build it, and uh, just a few little intricacies like that. It wasn't not a difficult thing, but one of those things where if you'd not done it for a while, it was like oh, which order do I do this thing in? It was one of those. But uh, that's all changed now, I believe. So, Because now we can attach the mechanisms to the side of the windmill. You can also still do it the old way. Yeah. Um, but uh, why don't we start by building a windmill? We'll yeah, indeed. There's wind. <clears throat> right, to get up onto the... <laughs> you no, know, we haven't. <laughs> uh, so there may not be wind. Um, I'm first of all going to have to go remove that piece of wall there, because that's how they get onto the roof. Mm 
I didn't leave a uh, permanent access to the roof because I wasn't planning on going back up there. You could also just oh. construct stairs on top of the uh, stairs that you have there already. Oh, just build straight up there. Yeah, yeah they'll the build roof. through the floors. Oh, right, okay. And it'll connect it and you'll get up downstairs there. Huh. But we have to construct them. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So I can construct straight through the floor without having to... Yep, just like building uh, walls on floors. The greatest feature in this version. Okay. So, oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I thought I actually had to remove the floors. Ah, fancy that. There you go. Okay. Uh, don't use the closest Stairs material. Stairs or walls, it turns out. Actually, let me just uh, cancel that. Because... I don't know what they'll use. And it's not that type and of cancel, it's that type of cancel. Oh yeah, you don't you don't want them using various different colors. Yeah, yeah but then, then, then it, you'll get then the it's that kind of cancel. One. <laughs> yeah. Right, cool. Yeah, I didn't want them to use the closest. Um actually they probably would have gone for wood. I was thinking there's probably boulders lying around and I've got bricks just a little bit further down they can use. I'd be Yep. A lot faster. Okay, yes, use... You could also um, use green glass if you want it to look fancy. <laughs> Indeed. I think they've probably only got one or two green glass bollocks up here, though. Whereas uh, we've got a whole load of peach wood logs. Use those, that'll do. Get them done nice and quick. Mm-hmm. So now what we could do up top is we could... Because windmills are three by three... Mm -hmm. We could queue up a couple of holes for the floors to power them from beneath. Indeed. Let's go for somewhere in the center where we've got um, a bit of space below. So we'll go somewhere like here. So, what, a three by three gap? As, as long as there's like three by three in between the two. So let's do one and then go two blocks over and then you can do another one and then two blocks over and you can ah, do another one. Okay. So we'll do a hole um, there. Just check what's below. But here's the beauty of this, right? Mm -hmm. Because windmills collect connect side by side, we only need one hole because we only need one spot for oh. the gear assembly underneath because the, the windmills will actually connect to each other. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I only need one hole, but we can connect Unless the... you want the power to go into different directions. Yeah. No, we'll just, take the, uh, we'll just take the power down for one of them. Yep. And then we could just queue up a gear assembly right beneath that. Mm. And then we'll build our first windmill right on top of it. Yeah, cool. And then as we connect more, then, you know, it'll just become a big old wind farm. I really like the way the windmills look in this version, but I think they actually look better if you space them out a little bit, because I, I do things for aesthetics over actual mechanics. But do you now know, we just I need to wait. Think, it's the waiting game. I think Looks I like they've got your stairs might, partially built. Yeah. I think I might be short on mechanisms. I'd best just get them to make a couple of... Um, make me some rock mechanisms. Uh, make Always it out very of picky about the anything. Material. Yeah, I've been making my mechanisms out of kaolinite because it was something I had a ton of, I wasn't using for anything, and it's magma safe. Uh, but mm. I need to go digging more um, more kaolinite. In uh, Sizzle Tongs, the fortress that I was just showing you, uh -huh. um, like the entire, I have like 18 layers or something of marble. Yeah. And I keep building stuff out of marble blocks and chat's like, but, but, but steel. Like, I have 2,000 steel <laughs> bars. <laughs> How much more steel do I need? Indeed. Yeah. So this fortress is uh, purple pants. <laughs> is that after or before brown pants? <laughs> yeah, I think kaolinite is clay. Yeah, it makes uh, porcelain. Yeah. I, I think I've done porcelain in this game once. It's, yeah, same here. <laughs> Like, I know some people who just build porcelain statues and things every time, and I'm like, nope, not me. Never. They right, well. don't seem to be coming up to the top to do these downstairs. Hmm. I had them dig through that once. 
That's a little annoying. Could it be that the material's different? Like, if I use the same material for the stairs going up that the roof's made out of, could it be something like Maybe. that? Maybe. I don't know. Well, Should we, we try? just, like, cut a hole in the wall and put a ramp in. Well, yeah. What I was going to do was remove that bit of wall there, because I've got a staircase. I've got a downstair could... there, so I could just stick an upstair there. Probably best just to do that, I would guess. Then just get the Although, top built. Although, um, I am... Let's see, if we got time? We've got a little bit of time. I'm cute. Let's do let's do let's do some science. What science are we doing? I'm gonna remove these wooden stairs here. Oh, and see what happens? Yeah, and then we'll try putting in this is uh, chirp blocks. We'll try doing an up down stairs using chirp blocks to see if it'll come through if the material's the same. I know I've had I've managed to make this work before, so now I'm also yeah. curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wrong designation. It needs to be that designation. Then we need to cancel that one. There we go. The erase to erase to erase. <laughs> right, let's let them remove the wooden stairs. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it is because it's it's two different materials, but if we go through with the same material. That'd be interesting if it does work with the yeah. same material. Because I know that like you can just construct stairs up as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Because something that I'll do is I'll queue up like 20 Z levels of stairs going straight yeah, up and then yeah. just queue up the floors next to them. Uh-huh. Um, and just to have like an instant tower, yeah. which is great, because you can queue them up on the ground and then you just remove the bottom layer and then you have an instant tower. Oh, do you know, hang on, another thought, right, to um, another science thought. I'll leave this one in as it is, and then I will try it on the other side. So uh, we were constructing constructing stairs here out of peach wood logs right i'll leave those in as they are uh they're the ones that they didn't do and i'll get them to remove those ones just in case there's some other reason so we've got the control of those and then we'll See if they do that. Yeah. Another thing that I haven't tried is, can you build stairs on walls? Like, do you have to deconstruct that wall, or can you just build stairs on that? Let's find out. I, um, my my knee-jerk response is that you can't. I think, yeah, I think it'll be blocked. Must remove construction. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's no fun. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they don't like that. That's interesting. Now, how the heck did I make that work then? I wonder if they had access from like some side spot that I wasn't on a, wasn't aware of then. Hmm. Because the floor is blocking it. Maybe, maybe. Weird. Okay. Or is it well. just that? What are you doing? You're const you're constructing a building. What building do you think you're constructing? <laughs> uh. The one where they stand still and don't move. Yeah. I wonder if they're confused because they're trying to get up there? Huh. Clearly that dwarf has stopped working. Indeed. Needs an OS reset. Ah, uh, that was... Although we could check in the task screen to see what building that dwarf Indeed. is constructing. Indeed. Uh, let's have a look at... If I have a look at your... No, we need to have a look. What's the name of you? Weird Norwegian. Wait, they're hauling something. What are they hauling? The logs. Okay, so that dwarf is trying to do it. He is. I'm guessing he just can't get to the top. You don't have a burrow on, do you? No. Um, I say no. Let's check. Nope. No, I've got two suspended burrows. Hmm. I wonder whether training season's got... There, there is one other thing that might be... Because nobody's doing anything at the moment, except the kids who are quite happy playing. But it is training season. Let me just try something else. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a look at their schedules.
I think Twitch just had a weird implosion moment. Oh, what happened? I think we're back now, but... I essentially, stream just vanished and then came back, at oh. least on my end. And chat's saying the same thing, so... I don't know. Hmm, still seems live over on my side. Yeah, I don't know. Twitch and Jess servers, probably. So they're all set to off duty. Of duty there. Let's have a look at that one. Um, it's only really the end months I need to change. I say this is this is training season, so a lot of my dwarfs are. Uh, even though I haven't allowed them to go and go down to the burrows to train. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, down to the barracks to train. They don't have a barracks to train in at the moment, so they won't be doing any work. They'll just be hanging around in the taverns and things. Gotcha. Just doing dwarf chilling time. Indeed. Yeah, it's like vacation a season. A lot of squads. Yeah, usually I put everybody in the fortress in a squad, but uh, that's a little bit more difficult in this at the version? moment. Yeah, I really, I'm really sad that they removed the "Add Dwarf to Squad" button <laughs> from the Dwarf CUI. All right, well, it looks like that wall piece has been removed, so we could just construct a yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll up there. I'll unlock those two in a moment. Um, <clears throat> I'll find out which squad they're in and I'll go and station them somewhere so that they cancel their jobs. Right, now let's try building a staircase uh, here that goes up to there that's made out of chirp blocks, the same thing as the floor above. Yeah, uh, do you know, let's just do a search. No, oh, there they are. Yeah. We'll see if they get to that. And here, we'll use the chirp blocks. Actually, I'll leave these guys stuck and see if, once we've built another staircase up, whether that unlocks them. Yeah, I feel like building the staircase up is going to unlock them, but... Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, anyway, mm, um, there we go. now they're digging out that, like, spot in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And we can see the gear mechanism beneath it. Now yep. we can build a windmill on top of it. And we get to find out if there's wind. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Or if the sound effects are just deceiving. Yeah, I think this, the sound effects happen when we get a snowstorm. So, yeah, I don't think it is related to... Um, to whether or not... Cold we got wind. Wind. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it was just far enough below the pole, uh, the North Pole, <clears throat> that we got a, um, a cold biome rather than a freezing biome. Gotcha. I do think that they really, really, really need to implement, like, the kids making snow angels. <laughs> yeah, <a> snowmen. <laughs> Yay, we Aye, wind. we've got some wind, indeed. So for 40 power, it looks like. Yes. Uh -huh. Yep. So it's using five for the base. So the this one windmill is making thirty-five power. Oh, okay. So now we can just connect other windmills to the sides of it. The kind of giveaway there is you can see like the little gear mechanisms around the edge of it. So oh, you can either yeah. connect axles to the sides of it. You mm -hmm. can connect more gear mechanisms to the side of it. You could put millstones directly around the edge of it, and aside from that, they operate exactly the same way as water wheels. So you can connect kind of whatever you want to it. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, let's put a couple more windmills up here, and that'll generate a bit more power. Sure. So you know, it's kind of a I, I guess like the, the the reason to use these instead of water wheels is it it gives you power without you having to do any kind of extra legwork, right? You don't need yeah. to direct water anywhere. You don't need to have a source of water. You just need to build a thing, and then it works. Generally, unless you don't have wind. 
I like the spaceship design we got coming. <laughs> I was thinking I could. Um, this is still accessible if they need to rebuild it or something. Yeah, why would you need to rebuild it? Yeah. Now, this is where my idea from earlier, where it's just like, mm. well, you can encase something in obsidian would be very helpful because creatures can crawl through these. Yeah, they can just um, get through the gap there. So if you were to encase that one where that that piece of livestock is there. Is yeah, yeah, I it's a llama. Yeah, it's a llama. Okay. Um, so a little bit of pixelation yeah. here on Discord. If that was, uh, if that was encased in obsidian, then that would, would keep work, us, yeah, and it would keep us secure from the reef. Yep. So, you know. Now they're building these other ones. We can check the power amount. Just Indeed. Sure gone up by a little bit. 160. There you go. And the it's fun fact, they actually point in the direction that the, that the wind is blowing. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I noticed that they were moving. Yeah. They had animations in the older versions, and they also pointed in the direction that the wind was moving, except they could only point, like, straight up and down or flat. Now they yeah, point yeah. to the left or they point to the right, depending. <laughs> That's so cool. So I don't think that axles would be able to go through for or axles cannot go through fortifications, and they certainly would not be able to be encased in obsidian. And the reason they wouldn't be able to be encased in obsidian is because they're made of wood. Although I guess maybe you could encase them in obsidian if it's nether cap. True. Yeah. Because nether cap is cold. For some reason. Let's uh, let's bolt uh, something on the end of this mechanism. Um. How about? I don't have a quern on the go at the moment. I probably need to make a millstone for it, don't I? Quern's um, aren't powered by anything, though. Oh yeah. Um, at least I don't think they are. <laughs> millstone. It's only millstones that are. Yeah. Querns are manual. Millstones are powered. All right. We need a millstone and yes, a mouse of mechanisms as well. Let's tell somebody to go and make me a a rock millstone. The question is, do you have an adamantine ballista arrow queued up? <laughs> I don't. I, in this fortress, I haven't got down to the magma sea. Uh, no, I've only just made it down to the magma sea. Well, it's because it's the first thing on the list, and it's very easy to misclick it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't actually made one, but like there was a post on the subreddit from a couple of days ago that's just like, would you like to, was just the title of the thing, and then like, <laughs> build an adamantine ballista arrow, it's like, no, no. <laughs> or assemble adamantine ballista arrow. Because it's like the alphabetical number one thing that shows up on the total list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Forgotten beasts having fun in the tunnels. That's generally what they do. Indeed. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if we've got a millstone yet. I mean, the little mm, piece yeah. of paper would pop up on the left saying that it's been built. That's true. So you could just mouse on that until it pops up. Mm -hmm. Or wait until it re-pops up. Although the question is, what else are we going to do with this? We could uh, make like a roller coaster for the kids out of minecarts. <laughs> we could do. <laughs> Throw them <laughs> off the edge of the thing. I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> it <laughs> Smack them into a wall real quickly. Yeah. Oh, we haven't had to look at that copper mace yet. While they're building the millstone, let's have a look at the copper mace that was generated. Somebody wants to spray mace on the enemies, I think. It's, uh, so our copper mace is called Vampiressa Seal Boots, and it was made by the dwarf called Vampiressa. Hmm. Actual vampire or just a nickname? No, no, just uh, name of someone in chat. Uh, <laughs> this is a copper mace. All craft dwarf shippers of the highest quality. The object is in adorned with hanging rings of copper. There's not even any spikes. No cabochons? No cabochons. No spikes. Where's the cabochon? Okay, quick. I need a Gordon Ramsay impersonator to say, Where's the cabochon? <laughs> Instead of where's oh, the lamb sauce. surprising. Is 
So now the question is, what, what else are we going to do with this power? Hmm. Because I think we have four hours, correct? We've got time. Yeah, we've gotten... We've got we don't have to... Yeah, we don't have to fill the time, but if you fancy, I'm up for yeah. doing something. Well, I mean, we could build a minecart for roller coaster for the kids, but like I said, I think that might... Be <laughs> um, most of this floor here is solid, so we can do things um, immediately under the surface. And well, kind of fun. then there's... Um, but then we get into the, the hollow bit. Um, the farms can be picked up and moved. They're not a problem. Uh, as you can see, we're not short on food and drink. Well, I mean, we could just build a little minecart track mm. in this layer that just looks cool and spins perpetually and does nothing of value and doesn't hit anybody. Yeah, sure. So that could be kind of fun. Yeah, cool. If I'd have, um, if I'd have thought we were doing minecart stuff, I'd have done some research. Because uh, it's been some... I haven't played with minecart since cool. back in um, Classic. And I well, don't think I did it in the last one either. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Channel down next to that uh, gear assembly on yeah, one of cool. the sides, as long as it's, you know, cardinal directions. When it's southeast or west. We'll come down on this side. I need to move the llamas over, I think. Because otherwise eh, we're going to end up with What are they going to do? Jump in there and turn into a cloud of mist? That's fine. <laughs> just llamas. That's my uh, part of my clothing industry, though. Well, they'll be part of the bone crafting industry. <laughs> <laughs> What I'll do is uh, I'll just move the llamas away from here a little. So now we can go down there and we can dig a fun pattern. Yeah, cool. Just keep them away from this edge. Now they'll only go in there if they really want. Mm. All right, so uh, I can connect up here through these... So that, that little hole in the center is going to be power, right? We're going to need power. We're going to mm -hmm. have a lot of power um, to power rollers. Rollers don't require much power. I think it's like two power per tile that there's a roller on. Yeah. Um, but essentially, I don't know, just dig a, or dig a little pattern in here somewhere that connects somewhere so that the dwarves can get there eventually. Yeah. Uh, we can remove those ramps so that the goats stop jumping <laughs> in there. That's um, all right. They'll all be moved into the other parts of the uh, thing. So do I want the, the will be minecart track to come across this or does it need to come to the side of it? Uh, no, because we're going to use that mm. to transfer power down yeah. and you can't transport power to a minecart roller vertically. And then the only real like wrinkle here is just make sure that any corners have walls next to them so it doesn't derail the cart. Right. This is all going to be dirt, I think, so... It will. Um, we can use whatever material we want to build the minecart rail. Um, and so you see, the last time you, you built a minecart track was in uh, a rather of older version. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Older version yeah. and quite some time ago as well. So what I would recommend is connecting this to one of the stairwells and yep. then maybe putting a door there that we can lock. Mm-hmm. Because once the thing gets going, I'm... Should we give it a way to turn it off? <laughs> Aside from, I guess, like, removing power, then we'll slow down a bit. <laughs> you can also connect um, levers to gear assemblies. Oh, yeah, to... Use a yeah, lever yeah, yeah. to turn the thing on That's and probably a good idea. All right, well, put a door there so that we can close that up when we need to. Mm -hmm. And I'll just go into the construction screen. Yep. And we want to construct uh, my track tracks. Yes. We can build track stops afterwards. Okay. So now uh, it's it's just a one-click system. So click where you want to start it, and then mouse to where you want it to finish. Okay, and you can we'll... go around corners too. Oh, can you? Yep. Uh, well, you can also span multiple Z levels. I queued up a minecart track from like Z level fifty all the way down to like minus one twenty, and it so selected in... the correct route. Oh. oh so wow, you're gonna that need was... to overlap the tracks because yeah. they won't automatically overlap each other. Okay. So you can do let's, that. Let's, uh, I'll tell you what then, let's cancel the ones that we've done. I presume it's cancel a yep. construction. Yep. Okay. And then we want to, yeah, that was most unexpected. I wasn't expecting that to 
go around the corners. Right, we'll take you to there. Yeah, and then you start it on the track that it's yeah. finished on. Overlap it to there. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. We're going to need to remove those ramps from that from uh, there. hole there, otherwise we won't be able to put a gear assembly Yeah, cool. There. Let's do that. And this should get enough power going to start the whole thing. And here's another fun thing we can do. You see where the door is? Yep. Let's have a track that goes from the door and connects with that track. Okay. And that's going to be where the track starts. Okay. Would it be on the door? Not on the door. Yeah. So like one above the door. Yeah. And then connects with that. Yeah. So I'm, I think the way that we should do this is just keep it super simple. So we'll, mm -hmm. we're going to need to make a minecart at some point. Yeah. But I think what we'll do is we'll put track rollers along this straight bit down at the bottom here. Mm -hmm. Have a starting spot right there by the door and have them kick it into the rollers. And then it'll just go in a circle until we turn the thing off. All right, cool. Okay. Ideally. Assuming it makes it that far. <laughs> They left a lot of clothes. In yeah, they, yeah, they're going through clothes changing season at the moment. Uh, we could also, um, you know, have like a little nook somewhere where you release a goblin and say, good luck. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> Make it to the end and I'll let you out. <laughs> and then you lock the door and say, good luck again. <laughs> okay, so to put in the rollers... Mm -hmm. um where would they go so they would go on the track so mm -hmm. rollers are uh under the construct thing you go to machines yep. and fluids i think that's constructions machines and oh, fluids sorry. Yep. That. uh rollers track rollers, there we rollers go. yeah so then here you see your direction so yeah, we want yeah, them yeah. going to the left i think sure and then maximum speed because why would you want anything less than ludicrous speed <laughs> um, so that's maximum then, speed yeah yeah, and then starting from, I guess, the corner there and then all the way to the left as far as they'll go. So the corner where I've got my cursor now or yes. one over to the right? That is the corner. Okay. So they can't go around corners, so let's just try and go from the corner to the corner. And it, it'll go right all the way up to the corner. Perfect. Okay. And uh, we'll we need, need some more mechanisms. We need yeah. more mechanisms and a rope. Uh, or we, chain. Sh we should have some ropes, but I'll get them to make some just in case I've used them for something. Okay, make me a... Just make me a rope. I'll be fine. I'll knock a few of those out. <laughs> Chat room really wants us to just put the llamas in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> That's my yarn industry up there. I'd pay good money to have those llamas shipped in. We wouldn't want to throw off the Emperor's groove. <laughs> No, this would be a good place to throw gnomes that drink your alcohol. If they make it out, you let them continue drinking your alcohol. <laughs> I did once learn that um, horses stop minecarts, and I'll be honest, it made me kind of sad. <laughs> Doesn't matter how fast it's going, unless you're, like, breaking the game with physics glitches. Sure. Um, horses stop minecarts. That is, that is quite sad. And I've still not got any mechanisms. Um, well, while we're doing... I've probably my mechanics. Oh, no, I've got plenty, mechanics. Of me got plenty of mechanics. How about mechanics workshops? True. I've only got one I've, mechanics I definitely workshop. had this happen the other day mm. where I was just like, why are my mechanisms not being made? Then I realized that I was moving my workshops and forgot to rebuild them. Uh, let me have a look at... I'll just zoom out to touch. My mechanics workshop is over here and down a few flights. Let's... Oh, it might be that my manager's busy. Uh, we could just manually queue some. Yeah, 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 that's what I was thinking. Okay, uh, make some rock mechanisms for us. Yeah, there we go. We need four for the thingy and then, I don't know, three extras? Yeah. Two to get power to it, and then one for a lever. Mm -hmm. And then two more after that. But Yeah, cool. 
Also, in regards to the question in chat on which direction it'll go, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> I think I know which direction it'll go, but it might not. <laughs> it's half the fun now, isn't it? <laughs> Also gonna need a minecart. I suggest we make it out of wood, so instead yep, of cool. turning a dwarf into red mist, it'll just break some limbs. Um, where did I leave my carpenter? Oh, I know, it's near the trade depot because most of my wood is bought in. Uh, I mean, we could make it out of metal too, but that's oh, just no, it's fine. We've got loads of um, loads of wood. Because uh, chat just mentioned that the evil biome or the evil biome ambient sound is nightmare fuel. <laughs> I uh, settled uh, on a beach and the ocean was evil, and all it really did was scream at us. Sometimes it was kind of disappointing. It's like, what's that sound? Oh, it's just the ocean. <laughs> yeah, the sounds were the ambient sounds were switched around. In was it the first patch or the second patch? Because I uh, was this was after the second patch. The I was getting the evil sounds in my first post-released fortress uh, when mm. I was in a can't remember whether it's a savage wilderness or a wilderness I would, I'd set Something up a fortress like in a desert yeah and it was a constant howling sound and I my fortress was built into a canyon uh, like really deep canyon and I, I thought it was canyon sounds because it did sound like the wind blowing through the canyon mm -hmm. it's like what is that sound oh it's mm. just the ocean screaming in pain <laughs> Before I forget, I just want to turn off all of my additional carpenters. Because we've got one legendary carpenter and that's... It's not often I'm making stuff out of wood, so I'd like them to be nice. Quality minecarts. Hmm. So you get to yeah. admire it before you die. <laughs> Indeed. Right, I think we should have the mechanism at least to make the millstone now. So we can, uh, we'll have that running. If we need more power, we'll just put some more windmills on the roof. I like how mm. easy the windmills are, actually. They're super quick. Mm. They're very, like, quick and dirty. I need power now. Mm. Do you notice Shut there up. isn't a shadow for the millstone? I'll be honest, I don't think I've built a millstone above ground in this version, so I hadn't thought about mm. it too much. I also don't generally build millstones. Just no, no, general. it's not something that I'm usually doing either. You could also bring What's the power one? down one more layer through the minecart shenanigans layer um, into bring it down your there, farm area. Indeed. We could, could have do. one down there. It'd be a little bit more convenient. That would be... Actually, do you know, that would be a better idea. Let's um, cancel that before before they do too much. I'll I was like, really? Down. I just brought these up here. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um... I think that's going to be right got, above your farms. I think I'll be able to position it so that it's in between the farms. We'll just I mean, bring it across with an axle or something. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. And right in the center of the farms is just a seed stockpile. I can move that over. Uh, right, so we want to put the rollers down here. I think we've got the mechanisms to get that going now. Let's have a look. Our, oh, it's machines. Rollers. And so we want the rollers to go to the left and from just in front of the junction to just before it the track turns the corner. Uh, you so to that right? sort of answer a question from chat yep. right now, um, when you're looking at the minecart tracks, it, minecart tracks are counted as floor. However, there are opaque tiles underneath minecart tracks. So it looks like there's no floor there. Trust me, there's still floor there. Yeah. And you can see that there's a little bit of moss growing under here as well. Yeah, because it's the gardens underneath. Yeah, you got kind of the... Oh, okay. So we're... It's almost like it's on a see-through floor. And that it literally is, is a see-through floor. It's like, it's like glass or something. Ah, okay. So. <laughs> one of those <laughs> weird dwarf fortress oddities, I suppose. But uh, now we could either uh, connect stops or we could just place the route on the minecart track itself. Um, but I think we should put a minecart stop right at the very beginning just because we're building a minecart track. Might as well go all the way with it. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. 
Okay, um, that's under construction. So, um, a truck stop and mm -hmm. on top of the first roller. No, we don't want to put that on the roller. Okay. Uh, that, that would be a very good way to kill that dwarf. Okay. I'd say right above the door. Okay, right here. Right there. And so that's going to be kind of our on-ramp. Do I want to change any of the settings up here? No. Okay. Um, so the, the minecarts on the right are brakes, so mm -hmm. maximum brakes on this current one. And yeah. the arrows are the direction that it dumps the items out. Ah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So... We don't want to change any settings on that. We just want to pick a material. And I want to complain about these because they're almost completely invisible. <laughs> so it's uh, They're very obvious on car tracks, but on constructed tracks, they're like, I, you can't see them. Yeah. Uh, you can, in fact, put rollers on engraved tracks as well as constructed ones. Oh, it stands out reasonably well with the nether cap. I suppose it depends I on what you make it out of. Mm. Yeah. All right, so now we can probably put a gear assembly in that uh, in that little nook there, niche nook, whatever. Okay, yeah, use anything. Yep, and then one above uh, to connect the, the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. And the one above is probably the one we want to connect a lever to, so we can turn this thing off. Yeah. Because when this thing gets going, it might get grumpy. <laughs> uh, let's see, we'll put, the, we'll put the lever near the stairs. That way, if they need to do it in a hurry, they don't have to go very far. Yep. So, God, Eurist is being mashed to death in the... <laughs> <laughs> One of the babies has been dropped into the minecart. Quick, stop it. Why did we build a minecart that goes nowhere? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, link that to... Oh, hang on. Are we out You need two more mechanisms. mechanisms. Let me just see if I've still got them queued. Yep. Because I did just put a random number in. Nope, I shall add uh, a few more. I'll add a couple more, because we never know when we're going to do some more shenanigans. I do think it's also really funny that you're going to launch a fully automated minecart system when you, <laughs> like, <laughs> go to turn on your millstone. <laughs> <laughs> we could also set it so somebody rides it, which... <laughs> <laughs> Although we should probably test it with nobody first. Yeah. Because it might also, like, not make it around. I'm not totally sure if it's going to make it around. Okay, it's powered. Someone was asking me if we, if you could, uh, like, use cats as uh, like a means of projectile. I'm like, well, they'd have to be in cages, so just make heavy cages. Hmm. But uh, it does seem to be working. If you click on the rollers and they say that they're powered, then we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. So now all we need to do, oh, we need to wait for loading yep. to save to end. Um, but we need to go to the routes screen and mm -hmm. then add a minecart route. Oh, I tell you what, I'm just going to do before um, we do that. Now we've come into spring. I just need to open the fortress up for business again. Um, mm -hmm. Because I am attempting to acquire another grizzly bear off the elves. Gotcha. Do um, you think that they would want a tour of our new minecart track? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the elves are my friends on, on this embark. Well, they generally are my friends, too. But, you know, they, they maybe they want a good time. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie. What I would do in this setup is just like have like windows or something looking in there, and then have like meeting halls around this, so they could just watch the minecart go by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for like not killing anything or anything no, actually just nefarious, the, just just like, for the boom, yeah. Boom. <laughs> it's like a like a model train set for dwarves. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking very much along those lines. I mean, it's given me ideas actually. <laughs> it's like the big Lego mm. train I have next to my. Desk. I've got uh, another. Uh, another fortress I've got on the go at the moment, which is a sort of octagon-shaped fortress. And mm. I was just thinking, yeah, I could have a minecart that just runs around the outside of the fortress and then have a bunch of windows that look out onto that. I mean, they can't even see through windows, but, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's there. It looks like they can see through it. 
and uh, yeah, just have a, a minecart that runs around the the outside. That'd be quite mm -hmm. cool. I can't remember who used to do it, but there was a person who used to stream Dwarf Fortress like on the older versions like a couple of years ago mm -hmm. who would make these massive, intricate mine chart cart tracks as like roof decorations. <laughs> I don't... It was always very cool. Yeah, I don't remember seeing that. Um, so the things I've used mine carts for in the past is some things like automating switches and stuff like that. So I... Yeah, I'm not that smart. Um... <laughs> Uh, just um, mainly pressure plates. So gotcha. uh, a minecart that runs around in a loop and runs over a pressure plate at a certain amount of time so that it's mainly for flipping drawbridges up and down. I use I... pigs for those. <laughs> uh, I, well, now I use children. Turns out children are really good at flipping drawbridges up and down. They'll just stand and play with the lever all day. They're quite happy with it. Um that, that without context is bad. <laughs> uh, right, far northeast. Yeah, let's get you open. <laughs> okay. oh, I'm a bad person. Why did you let me up this? <laughs> oh, blind, you are awful. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Moving on quickly. <laughs> yep. Uh, so now we need to set the route. Yep. So route going left. Kick mm -hmm. it when minecart empty. And that's under the hauling routes, isn't it? Yeah, that's just under hauling routes. Yep. Look Which at this is literally there is no hauling routes left in it. It's literally just for minecarts now, yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. So we go to. Oh, you'll have to because I haven't done it at all on this one. So route one. Do I add the stop first? Do I you add a stop? Yep. That'll give you the other buttons you need to click. Mm -hmm. Click where you want to put it. So on the track stop. Okay, so on the track stop, yep. Yep. Ah, there we go. Click that. Uh huh. And then click the weird funky looking green button. Because I don't know what that's supposed to mean. This one? Yes, that one. The conditions. Yeah. Yep. And then I would honestly just say uh, remove all of them. Just delete all three of them. Yeah. Click on the plus new. Uh huh. Then there's a little dude pushing a minecart. Yep. Click on the little blue dude until there's a shoe. And uh -huh. There you go. And then we have to select the direction it goes, which is the tool next to it. Yep. We want it to go to the uh, west. Uh huh. To the left. Yep. And uh, then right next to it, you get your condition options. Mm -hmm. So uh, push off immediately when empty of desired items. I, I would click that once, I think. Yeah, when at least zero. And now yeah. we just need to assign a minecart to the track and it'll work. Okay, and we do that over here. The plus minecart button. That, that's for loading stuff into the minecart. I don't uh, think we're right. putting anything in this minecart. Okay, so the plus minecart is up here next to the root one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do I click the I done I actually have a really good idea of what you could use this minecart oh. for. Any enemies that get caught in cages, the cages get put into the minecart, and then they get just pushed in circles for all eternity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, right, Do I? are we done with the conditions? Do I click the done? Yep, that should be done. And yep. then we just need to add a minecart. Add a minecart. We've got another Ooh, another cap minecart. Fancy. All right. Okay, so they now are. There's a little minecart with an exclamation point because it really wants to be on the route. Mm hmm. Now, I think it's going to go around the track and then go left onto the rollers, but it might not. Mm. So if yes. we want to be sure that it's going to go to the left, we could remove one piece of track there so it'll just kind of jump the tile and just keep on the track. Well, there Let's it goes. It does. Ah, okay. okay. So, so it just stops the there. Wall. So if we wanted it to just go around in a continuous loop, how would we do that? What then? I would say, one to the right where the minecart currently is, remove that. Tile. This one here. Yeah, that one right yeah. there. So just use the, de the normal building deconstruct tool. Mm-hmm. And uh, they should theoretically click it, kick it over the hole, and then it should fire off onto the rollers. Uh, what I'll do, I'll just forbid the minecart for the moment. We could forbid the minecart, or we could change the conditions on the route. Either would work. Yeah, I figure that because we've only got one minecart. I figure that'd be the the easiest thing to do is just forbid it. Yep. <laughs> Rather than getting one of my dwarfs run over. Yeah. I probably won't get run over. Okay. You just unforbid it, and then it'll work. You have a neat little looping minecart thing. Oh, also, if you click on the traffic button, it's the two little arrows pointing to the right. Yep. 
I think these are, yeah, by default, they're all minecart tracks are set to do not walk here. Oh, really? Did not go around the corner? It didn't go around the corner. Maybe what we should try doing. Oh, oh is I that see, because, because we got the, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Do so I need to need replace to, that? We're going to need to replace the track underneath it. So I think if we just build over top of it, it should correct it. Ah, right. Okay. So just the same material. Uh, construction um, track. I have no idea what the material was. Uh, some wood. Curious if it'll let us connect it to where the rollers are, or if we'll need to rebuild the rollers. Mm. I appreciate you making jokes about my username, chat room. All right. So... We might need to deconstruct and reconstruct the rollers. Yeah. Well, do we need to do the whole length or just the rollers here? It'll be the whole length. Oh, it's the whole Yeah, it's a system, it isn't length. it? Uh, let's yeah. see what they do. Let's see if it connects. Yeah. Yeah, I don't generally yeah. build repeating tracks like this. I usually just build one way and then tell yeah, them to take yeah, it back yeah. down and yeah. hope nobody's in the way of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes you have bodies on the tracks and it's fine. Usually. Okay. So if... Well, what if I deconstructed that corner piece there? It wouldn't have uh, something I mean, to come around, I, would it? I don't know if it would reconnect is the problem. I, right. I mean, it might. Or we could dig down a little ways and then back up and in, but could also, like, make it go down a level and up, make it into a real roller coaster, but then that would just be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, we'd ruin yeah. your nice back. We've got right stuff here. going on under here as well, so that would take some shenanigans. So, yeah, what I would recommend is just deconstruct and reconstruct the rollers. They're very okay. fast to build, though. So they're, they're like a, they're a construction, like a building, so you have mm -hmm. to... Yeah, that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now let's try the mine tracks. Yeah, so now we can connect it. That's, and then, then it'll reroute the way it's supposed to be, and then we can put the rollers back in yeah, yeah. once it's done being built. And then we can unforbid the minecart and see if the uh, new toy setup works. I love how we're building all of this with like no means of turning it off. <laughs> well, we have. We, well, we've got... Well, I mean, we the... can deconstruct the roller on the top, but I don't think we've actually connected the lever yet, have we? I think so. Did we? Well, maybe, maybe we did. I haven't tested it. I mean, we can click show linked buildings. Yeah, there's not two... Oh, no, we didn't. I know why we didn't. Uh, because we were out of um, mechanisms. Right. Um, ah, I'm going to have to take a, a momentary hiatus to deal with the elves. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. Sorry about this. Uh, right, I just want them to come... Hobbies and... later. Trading first. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Just got to sort this out. Um... Right, bring up some cut gems and what kinds of craft? Uh, can't sell them totems. I mean, yes, they would not be very fond of totems. Yeah, indeed. Um... Oh, no, I remember what I was selling. That's right. Uh, I was selling the headgear. I've been selling them piles and 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 piles, and piles of gold crafts. <laughs> Until they started attacking me. And then, and then you stopped selling things. Mm-hmm. They started attacking me, though, in, in World Gen because I uh, built a new fortress and then that elven faction went to war with me in that time. And I was like, ah, come on, you too! <laughs> Every single known faction in the world is at war with my dwarven civ in Sizzle Tongs. It's kind Empty. of sad. Yeah. Oh, and uh, first week of spring as well. I've got the um, all of the deaths to deal with. These are all the old age deaths. Oh, no. Um, so, my bait dog... Got a war dog somewhere, um, and three pet cats. I don't know if I've got. I enough recommend naming, renaming that. the bait dog next time to Baity to Baity Biter. 
Beatty Biter. Sounds better than just Bait Dog. <laughs> yeah, Shell Team. Uh, well, it's best... just like whenever whenever I use um, a pig as like enemy detection, we call it the ham radio. <laughs> or ham radar. Uh, best check the dogs that they can't see as well. Do you know, this is what we've got the mini-map for. Also, did you know that if you war train a dragon... Um, even if it's chained up, it'll just start killing anything that moves when your military goes and starts attacking stuff, neutral yeah, or otherwise. Yeah, it's, it's been like that for a while, though. Yeah, I learned that recently. <laughs> yeah, even if it's, even if it's a, a happy dragon all tamed and part of your fortress, it's still, um, it and your military have a beef. No, Indeed. no, not your military, but like if it's a if it's a war trained dragon and it's assigned to your military and like friendly with your military and it's let's just say pastured somewhere uh -huh. um, far away from your military. If your military goes and starts attacking goblins on the surface, the dragon will just start shooting fireballs. Huh. Like it gets enraged in combat regardless of if of it's with your military it or not. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Which I think is kind of hilarious. Yeah, I'm just wondering what kind of um, what kind of use could you? That that sounds like an interesting mechanic. So like, the, the problem the problem was, I had windows into my library with a dragon behind it. <laughs> <laughs> so my books caught fire. Well, just make sure that I unforbid any dead cats in that room. Um, where else have I got animals? I've got my dogs temporarily stationed in there. They're they're about to move downstairs. Mm -hmm. I've done the pigs, I've done the birds, I've done the animals on the surface. We've checked the dogs out, out and about. Uh, let's find another war dog to use as, uh, what are we calling him? Baity Bitey? Baity Biter? Baity biter. <laughs> At least not dead yet. <laughs> okay, and we shall add Baity Biter down to here. Uh, Be nice also, if bouncing off of chat once again, uh -huh. um, corpses do appear in the stocks menu, and you can mass dump all of them. I do frequently. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> the reason why I'm not using these stocks is because if I look under corpses... All of yours are flat? And don't exist? No, it's because there's so many down in the caverns. I'm sure they're fine. And plus find. it shows up the ones that are already in... Yeah, trying to find... Where's the... Oh, there's Talia. Talia's in a coffin. Um... Yeah, trying to find the where are today's current corpses out of the list of two hundred and one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's why I don't use or I don't use the stock screen anymore. I was doing it first when I didn't have too many to go through. Right, we've got Beatty Biter down there. And it tends to be that it's all in the same place anyway. And then just check. So we found the three pet cats and the stray war dog and the bait dog. Yep. Yeah. Right, cool. Um, they'll tell me if they find any more. Many people don't believe me that things die of old age in this game. Oh, yeah. And all of the old age deaths tend to happen at the same time. Uh, it's usually the first week of spring uh, you get all the old age deaths. I found usually it's it doesn't start until you're at about year three. Well, I mean, depends on the age of the thingy. Mm, yeah, it can happen your first spring. Yeah, although dwarves... The first seven dwarves you get are, like, between the age 50 and 80. Yeah. And they don't die of old age until, like, 160. Yeah. So. 
most of the pets, uh, even the short-lived ones, usually have a year or two before... Um, they've usually got a year or two left in them before they start dying off, I've noticed. Yeah. See what's fighting? Forgotten Beast. Okay, you found the straight bait. Good thing we already forgot. The traders leave, or...? No, no, they're just making their way in. They're probably coming from... To find and follow them. They've got to come through the northeast gate. If they've come in through the southeast, then they've got to walk across the map to get to us. Well, we could follow them. We can do. Gives chat something to watch. Yeah, indeed. Instead of just filling time. Sure. There they go. Doop -doop. That is quite the walk. Yeah, it depends on where they're coming in from. I wonder if they uh, feel like ominous walking past these massive garbage killing me. <laughs> <laughs> With the blood splatters on the floor. This is... not concerning. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. We were here last year and nobody killed us yet. Oh, here comes the diplomat as well. The very important diplomat. Okay. And there they go. They can now scoff at uh, all of the materials of war. Indeed. Uh, let's get my trader to the depot. That's uh, something that threw me off, is that they don't like trading for weapons now. <laughs> uh, 25 trees, that's yeah, fine, yeah. I can't help but notice that uh, your the diplomat's name is Wari, who is my queen. Oh, right. Yeah, same person. Huh. Some people are good at sniping uh -huh. nobles. I once had um, an elven tra uh, an elven diplomat turn up, and you know when you read the name and you only actually hear how it sounds after you've pronounced it, do you get that? Or is it just me? Um, I, I read out the name and then heard what I just said afterwards. Um, I had a, an elven trader arrive, and I was just reading the text. <clears throat> the uh, the elven uh, the elven diplomat sorry the elven diplomat uh, Yare Eater Willy has arrived and then I was like ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> oh dear yeah <laughs> that um... <laughs> generally dwarf fortress is pretty good at not <laughs> generating <laughs> concerning names but like I think person. one of my favorite ones was I got I I had a pink tourmaline scepter. Uh -huh. And the direct translation for the name translated to the Pink Impaler. <laughs> <laughs> and I fell out of my chair laughing. Uh, right, let's see what they've brought. Uh, particularly the animals. Come on. Oh, a giant cougar. We'll go for the giant cougar. I'll take your... Oh, they've brought me a breeding pair of giant cougars. Ooh. Um, I'll take your giant leopard. Have your common snapping turtle. We'll butcher that and we'll use that for, um, for shell. I've had a hard time getting shells on this map, so any time I get the opportunity to shell something. Um... There's a very real sign um, put up by BC Parks close to where I live um, in one of the uh, local parks that has a big walking loop in it. Yeah. And it's this really big red sign. It has a picture of a cougar on it. And oh, it wow. says, um, beware, cougars known to be an area, especially dangerous to single men walking alone. <laughs> Which I, st I still haven't figured out if they know or not, but it's very funny whenever I walk past <laughs> that sign. All right, I'll buy the rest for meat and leather. And because 
I do like the elves' wooden cages as well. I won't buy the peahen because I've got a whole bunch of peahens, but uh, yeah, we'll buy the rest of those. Right, I don't need to sell all the gems. We'll keep a few of those and we'll keep a few of the better quality steel helmets as well. So oh. just because it came up in chat, Sal, yeah. what do you use shells for? Oh, I I keep I like to have a little stock of shells just in case I get a strange mood that requires shells. I don't normally use shells for anything unless I happen to have <clears throat> uh, a big stock of them mm. uh, or a continuous stock of shells. But I would, if I did have a continuous supply of shells, I would probably use them to decorate stuff with, like decorate with shell. Um, or maybe I, you make shell crafts. For sale. I throw them into the nearest garbage disposal unit or oh, right. volcano, generally. Ah. Um, and then if a dwarf needs shells on, for an artifact, I tell them that, that their life sucks. I <laughs> move on with my life. <laughs> Um, I don't generally build a wall around them. I'm not that mean. I'll just let the other dwarves beat them to death if they go nuts. <laughs> I was just checking um. they didn't bring any wood for me. Sometimes the elves bring wood. should just look and make sure there's nothing else I want to buy before I... They, they've brought a lot. They think I might have a need of gloves. I don't need any of your fruits or things well, we this year. said these elves are pretty handy. <laughs> yep, no, we're fine with that. Let's trade. Uh, give we're them a... going to end up in the pungent by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. They're very happy with the trading. Let's release the broker. Um, I do need to do a quick check on the pets yeah I've only got one one spare coffee so right make me a rock coffin what are those coffins made out of that's marcasite huh interesting it's very green yeah it's got that kind of almost fake gold I, I was initially thinking it looked like olivine, and then I'm like, wait a second, that's the wrong color. It's not green enough. It's like right. muddy gold. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like um, fake gold costume jewelry kind, kind of gold. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have enough coffins to put the dead pets in from this year, so keeping my dwarf sanity in mind I shall uh, I'll just rack up a couple of coffins for them just see what we've got I do miss having planning mode from uh, DF hack I'll, I'll admit to that <laughs> you can plan though um, I mean, the ability for, for what, sir? Oh, you want to plan buildings? Yeah, yeah. The ability yeah. to place down buildings that we haven't yet built. I do miss that function. Meh. I don't plan. I do. <laughs> um. Right, we know about you. Right, we'll set up a tomb. I'm not a multi. No, tomb. Also, there. I'm just gonna yeah. comment on this. You know mm. that you can smooth underneath constructed. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. Okay. And engrave as well, which is nice. I was just asking because uh, I noticed that you already had a line smooth. Yeah. There. I was just wondering. I think the biggest loss about this version of the game mm -hmm. is that we can no longer. Um, build walls out of soap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to like. It's a um... massive shame that I can't make my walls and fortress of soap anymore. <laughs> yeah, um, building baths out of soap, especially foot baths. Mm -hmm. 
making all of the uh, mist generators grates out of soap blocks. <laughs> Ash can't hold dragons, but uh, a wooden cage can. Also, something I've always wanted to experiment as a form of defense is if you set wooden barrels on fire that have alcohol in them, same with glass pots, they explode. Quite violent, Say that again. actually. Sorry. If you set a barrel yeah. on fire yeah. that has alcohol in it, uh -huh. they explode. Oh, yes, 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 yes quite violently. Yeah. I've always wanted to attempt that as like a form of defense, but I've never had a reliable way of setting things on fire. And <laughs> dumping lava on stuff doesn't really have that effect. Like it doesn't always set things on fire reliably and I need a reliable source of fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got, um, where were we up to? We were built in the rebuild in the rollers, I think. Yep. Yep. Right, build, construction, and, uh, sorry, no, machines, rollers. Rollers. We want them to go to the left. We want them to go from power. here to there. Use, use the ones that are close by. So that's the first few, yep. Yep. Use the chain, that's the rope that's close by. There okay. they go. And then if we wanted to go faster, we could use this to power more. <laughs> and then it'll be like a fair ride where the kids scream, FASTER! That cat really likes that dwarf. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've got then... one of those dwarfs that really likes cats, and the cats really like that dwarf. He's been adopted by many. <laughs> That's, oh. He's one of the dwarfs I've got to keep, because, you know, the cats die over time. Um... Yeah, he's had an awful lot of dead pets. There was um, one time I had a dwarf die due to having too many pet cats. <laughs> really? Um, yeah, because he was climbing down a stairwell and then randomly appeared dead at the bottom of the stairwell. You think he was the cats and pushed him? I think I think the cats pushed him out of the stairwell because he had about 35 of them following him around. <laughs> there it goes. Let's see. Do it work now? There Yay! we go. Now we have a model train set. Now, you know, if you want to just make it safe, we could actually turn that wooden log there into a, um, like, a core wall. piece or something. Yeah, yeah, Into yeah. a wall, yeah. Yeah. And then we'll just, we'll have a perpetual motion uh, minecart mm. circle. I was just going to check that um, the, if we link the lever up to that mechanism, um, yeah. then we should be able to stop it from yep. going around. Let's do a quick check It'll on slow that. down. Hmm. Pretty quickly too, actually, because I think it. I think technically it's colliding with the corners. Yeah. I think it's actually going like pretty, pretty breakneck speed. I'm just wondering, is it actually picking up? Is it getting faster? <laughs> I hmm, don't think so. I think it goes faster around the first half and it slows down a little bit towards the second yeah, half. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's going faster each time. Seems pretty consistent, actually. I was wondering. We if should it was set this so that a dwarf rides it, just to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's it looks fairly secure. Safe-ish. Safe-ish, yeah, not too too bad. Yeah. Okay, right. So if we Flounder. pull the lever now, I like to, I do like to check my things work. Uh, you see, my my job, um, my my training, I was. Um, I uh, did my degree in mechanical engineering. I was did a fair few uh, fair few jobs related to that in the first instance. I didn't graduate high school. So. Oh right. Oh, <laughs> well, I well, barely. Technically, I I dropped out. Yeah. And then I did my summer courses, or I did it over a summer, yeah. like four years later. But technically, I didn't graduate high school. Uh, the gears stopped. So it has. Good. Yeah. So my cart slowed down. And so unlock the door and they will start it over. Indeed. And if we change the route to ride, then the dwarf that starts it will jump in. Should we do that? Okay, so Let's to change the, the route to ride, that's going to the roots. On that, so you this click one on here? the little greater than, less than symbol buttons. Mm -hmm. Put the equals and the not equals. And then click the boot. 
until it has a little picture of a dwarf riding it. Hey! <laughs> Fabulous. Let's do that then. I don't know how many of my subs are watching, but if I could get a crypt zoom, that'd be pretty great. All right, we'll need to have it powered. That would help. Oh no! There's a lot. Oh no! There's a lot of things on. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. What's it? Uh, 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 oh dear. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, Let's see. Um, see how this our goes. tactician <laughs> and our, one of our pet cats is um, <laughs> is about to be run over by our chief miner. <laughs> Potentially, yep. Uh, oh, nope, dodged. Wow, nicely done. Let's just let's see see what the dwarf thinks about this. Actually, I'm very curious as to the, the dwarf that's not current. Well, okay, satisfied at work. Well, interacted with a pet. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder whether. <laughs> 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 Hi, bye. Is that your pet cat? <laughs> Did you pet your pet cat while flying? <laughs> what was there a combat log? We need to find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, it is my chief miner that has all the cats. Uh, well, I mean, we could jump into that miner's relations. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it's lost its leg. Oh, it's fine. It's It'll fine, the other person just dragged it off the track. Get here, you three-legged cat. <laughs> what about the other dwarf? Let's have a look at the other dwarf. Uh, there was no combat log. I think the dwarf dodged it. I would think did, I'm the yeah, monster yeah. here, chat room. I, I don't, don't blame Sal for any of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any thoughts about this recently? No, you're quite... You didn't really <laughs> mind this. Saw a cat being run over by a minecart isn't uh, anything that you've noticed recently. Yeah, no. No, no like, satisfied after improving dodging? <laughs> uh, I wonder what his dodging skills are. He might be... Oh, no, he's a... Well, he's a minor. That would be under combat spend... skills, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course That'd it would. He's already. Oh, I mean, he's a proficient dodger. That's how he managed so he to avoid it. So he proficiently dodged it. He did indeed. Yeah. yeah, it's something I I give as many of my because this is one of my original seven, um, my oh, really? starting seven dwarfs. I uh, I give them as many as possible. I'll give a point in dodging and and then a point in some of the random military skills, particularly the unarmed combat. So that they get a little bit of practice, and then they'll all train each other up during training season. Yeah, and get those. Chad skills. also has a really good point. Uh -huh. Benny was rusty before that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably was. <laughs> Not rusty anymore. <laughs> He's got some practice in this year's uh, dodging practice. Shame the poor cat wasn't. What did the cat think about that? It was. Uh, it was asked the cat. Where are you? Well, I guess we should ask the cat. Ask, the, ask gas. There you are. Injured. Unconscious and injured. Unconscious. Oh, no. Af Content after a bath. Yeah. Afraid after experience and trauma. After trauma. It's just like all of my pigs oh, that are is. chained up that are guilty all the time. <laughs> they know what they did. <laughs> He'll recover. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Right. Um... So now we have a dwarf going in circles. We do. <laughs> Which means we can follow for a bit. Indeed. Your thoughts? Yeah. So, yeah. Fun this interacting with a pet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quite a lot of cats. <laughs> Although I imagine... I wonder if Sass isn't some... one of their pets. Oh, no. There's Ass. Oh, okay. So, yeah. No, they did literally drive by pet. Yeah. <laughs> That's very funny. It's got to be headache inducing, you think? You think so? Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dwarf will die of dehydration. It's yeah, not like yeah, they can yeah. Get out. We'll, um, 
pull the lever now. Indeed. Gives <laughs> a chance to go for a ride. Although minecart pushing is a job, so it is possible that like another thing that you can also do with this is um, you can attach levers to doors, which forces the door open. Mm -hmm. So you can force the door open, let the minecart through, and then shut it with the lever. Oh. Unlock it. Right, well, just let her slow down. There we go. Only one cat was harmed in the making of this track. <laughs> and if we set it to be kicked again, then we could just let it run. Yeah. Uh, Although at some it? point, we'll, you'll look in here and there will be a dead animal in there. And you'll be yeah, like, how did you get there? <laughs> um... I did once have a powered minecart that went up a couple of Z levels to bring boulders from a lower level up to an upper level. And um, a bunch of thieves ran into my fort, and one of them got stuck in there and turned into red mist. <laughs> okay. What I'll do for the moment, I'll just forbid the minecart. They can come back and get that later. Because um, the other thing we were going to look at is bringing the power down from this assembly um, mm -hmm. and putting a millstone somewhere in the midst of the um, the farming area here. Yep, we can connect some axles. A nice little spot just there. Yep. Maybe a nice little power structure. Mm. And kind of look nice with the decorative minecart track. Yeah, it's like the it. National mm. Dwarven Minecart Museum. Hey, <laughs> indeed. Uh, you will need to be a channel at the end there. Okay, I can start. I can get that mill. Can I get that millstone in straight away? Can the, yep. Will they let can, me put it down without a? It doesn't need power connected to be built. I don't know if you can power them from above. Oh, we'll try. Good point. Well, we'll try it. If we can't, I'll move it over and we'll attach a mechanism there, a gear assembly yeah. there instead. Right. Let's see if it'll if it'll let us place the, the gear, gear assembly, assembly above it. It'll there. probably work. Hmm. Otherwise, it'll be like. Okay. I guess yeah, we can't seems fine. The top. So then just one right next to it, and then just one tile of. Yeah. Can they pass through the work. assemblies? Yeah, they walk over top. Oh, of them. right, cool. No, they're not walls, which is why filling them up with obsidian is important. I only need one piece of axle there, don't I? Mm -hmm. And we're not naming it Rose. Axle Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I was having one of those, huh? Moments there, yeah. uh, <laughs> which is like my relationship with chat all the time, to be honest. I mean, you, you have to deal with me as who's a human personification <laughs> of Twitch chat for four hours. So. <laughs> oh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this um, for this session. Uh, just remembered I've got some animals I need to tip out. I've actually put down a new dog room over here. Uh, uh, yeah, later. I'll sort that out later. Where's my current dog room? Where is my current dog room? Should be on this level. Well, certainly not in the non dug out stone levels. Right, I've got a bunch of animals in cages that need to be moved. Uh, we'll have the leopard... The leopard and the... Cougars brought there, and then who's war trainable? Most dogs, I would assume. I generally only war I war train the males. That way it makes it easy to spot when I've got uh, a guild and war, war train most of the males. Um, this is like Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's so so that if... Because I can't geld the females. 
which oh. means that we're going to end up with accidental puppies down my corridors and things, and then you end up with um, people just running outside. Extra dinners, though. <laughs> I just let them breed uncontrollably and then have lots of meat and leather. Oh, we can train an ocelot. Okay, we'll keep the... I've got a porcupine, apparently. That, has that been there since last year? Well, has what been where since last year? Uh, I've got a I didn't think I bought a porcupine in a cage this year. It must have been in the cage since last year, poor thing. Hmm. Well, he's got a point. Or 200. Um, the giant cougars are not war trainable, which is a shame. The giant leopard is. Well, they're like cats, so they behave yeah, like cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think with Although my... I don't, I don't think they claim owners like cats do. Yeah, you can make them available as pets. I think what I'll do, I'll breed, because we, we've got a breeding pair, I'll breed them, they'll become my new pigs. I mean, you could also, like, lock them in the front door. They are quite, mm. like, the formidable force. So, if enemies run into them, they will fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, usually when I buy the animals from the elves, anything that isn't war trainable or I don't want for some purpose... Uh, we just butcher them. It makes some nice leather, nice leather, nice meat. Bit of um, bit of exoticness going on there. But yeah, I think I'll switch out my my pig industry for giant cougars. That's that's got to be some fancy leather coming off those guys in the future. Kind of curious about how much meat you get from a fully grown giant cougar. Indeed, I bet it's I bet it's not a short amount. I'm sure the wiki will tell me if I looked, but that yeah. requires typing. And Indeed. Looks. And sometimes it's fun just to have a look. So I've got a Ooh. bunch of uh, war links. And we've got... In fact, we're breeding war links at the moment. Um, they will... Once I've got a, this batch of cubs trained up, uh, I'll replace my dogs on the doors with those, I think. Just because they're... That's not uh, real. Hmm little bit uh, more exotic than usual right so back upstairs why was that i down saw here? links in real life once oh really pretty neat yeah me and my dad we were driving out of um a uh pub a very large public park um, called moose valley park mm. it's one of those parks that like it's a park but like you have to drive to get there it's like an hour's drive in the middle of nowhere to get there and uh we'd been canoeing all day and we were driving back out of the park and uh, my dad just like stops the brakes on, uh, hits the brakes on the truck, turns the truck off, and says, "Do not move." And I'm like, "What?" And he goes, "There's a giant cat right there." <laughs> and he just points at the thing. And it's like maybe like I don't know, two meters away from the like front of the truck, and it's like sitting like just off the side of the road, just looking at us. Oh wow! Yeah, just sitting there. It looks like it's like a giant cat, like a giant house cat. Cool. With pointy ears. And then it. My dad took like three, four photos of it, and then it just like skulked away. Mmm. Cool, cool, cool. So we've got a millstone set up now in case I want to. Um, I'll probably be using that later because um, uh, a little bit later on down the line, I'll be doing an um, a stream all about libraries and paper making and stuff like that. So I can use this because if I remember... Um, to make sheets, we will be pulping plants into slurry. Mash plants into slurry, I seem to remember, is how we make sheet. That's how you make paper, yeah. Then mm. you press the slurry, add a screw yeah, press, yeah. and the slurry become paper. Yeah, yeah. It's like the most nondescript crafting recipe on earth. It's like, <laughs> why would I want slurry? <laughs> why do you want slurry? Almost sounds like where I live. You live in somewhere that sounds like Slurry? Yeah, I live there's in a, Surrey, BC. I was going to say there's a there's a place in the UK called Surrey. <laughs> was the yeah, closest we we place have I a Surrey, we have a New Westminster, we have a Victoria, mm -hmm. we have a Richmond. <laughs> pretty sure those are all yeah, like, yeah. UK places names. in the UK. Indeed. It's almost like we stole all your names or they moved here yeah, and you came... we're not very creative. <laughs> <I think. laughs> this place <laughs> reminds me one. of home. You can tell by the... 
tremendously hot summers, the tremendously cold winters and the fantastic wilderness around here, just like we have back in the UK. Look at those I, moose. I would argue we have see. nicer mountains. Yeah, well, yeah, that was, that was, sorry, I should have said slash S. <laughs> uh, I see. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we can probably pull that lever and start those things spinning again. I think I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. So we've got those spinning now? Yep. Let's see if the millstone's powered. Millstone's powered? Let's get them to do a thing. Go find a plant to mill. We should have some cave wheat around that can make into flour or something like that. There we go. Some cave wheat gone in. There we go. And yeah, because of my location, that's why I go to Pax West. Uh -huh. Aha. It's because it's like a three hour bus ride from here to Seattle. Ah. Uh -huh. That's why I always randomly appear for at least a day at Pax West. <laughs> when is Pax West this year? Uh, it's always somewhere in early September. Mm. It was like the first weekend of September last year. Although TwitchCon dates have been leaked, which is interesting. Oh, I hadn't heard about that. Yeah. But those are leaks, so I don't actually think I can say that. On yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we shall let them get on a mill some of that. What have we got? Stray war, giant leopard, very nice. They've been slaughtered. Yep, that's fine, that's fine. Good, good, good. Well. I think we now just we have this are... really dangerous toy minecart. We do. It's not that dangerous. I mean, it most almost of my... killed a cat. <laughs> I mean, most of my dwarves are, um, are well practiced in... Dodging. Dodging, yeah, indeed. And as long as the this keeps running... They've got a little toy train set there. I say, you say, it's very tempting to come up here and... And yeah, I I hmm. <laughs> I want to do something pattern. like that. Yeah, right. We'll we'll lock that for the moment. I love the idea the... of this running round actually a, a, along the outside of a fortress, mm -hmm. and having the fortress walls made of glass and. Something I really want to know is like. If the edge of the walls were made out of like fortifications and there was a pig in a cage, would the pig in the cage see? <laughs> <laughs> like, could we make a highly upgraded ham radar? <laughs> hmm. hmm. <laughs> it sounds like science that needs to be under undertaken. Uh, I mean, the science would actually be very easy. Just put a loose cage with an animal in it and see if it spots to sell a stealthed enemy. Mm. I haven't had any stealthed enemies on this map yet, so not something Drop I... Drop it can... into a cavern layer, where oh. there's probably cavern invaders would do it. Mm. The thing is, I'm too lazy to actually do that science. Hey, <laughs> it's the kind of thing that you set out with the purpose of rather yeah, than it, yeah 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 also i'm pretty sure it like wouldn't work so it's <laughs> one of those, like, i'm like mostly certain that wouldn't work but i still kind of want to try it <laughs> although this would be a really good way to keep birds from landing on your roof <laughs> like Just have, have a, a bunch of minecarts spinning back and forth you could like yeah cover the whole thing <laughs> yeah, with mine have, like, 20 tracks. different minecarts spinning in circles it's like well climb this <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you see, Eurus goes flying off the wall. What happened to you? Oh, <laughs> dodge. Well, Blind, I think we've pretty much covered all of the power things, haven't we? Where mm -hmm. uh, we got through it a little bit faster than I expected, but uh, that's my uh, my stream a little bit earlier on this week. Uh, we overrun by an hour, <laughs> so we've. Uh, we've underrun by about an hour, but I'm I'm quite happy with calling this here. If uh, I feel cool. as though we've reached a kind of natural point, um, would you like to just tell everybody about 
like where they can where they can find you what you're up to what they can expect to see coming out from you in the future tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing at the moment uh well i just finished that tutorial let's play that we showed uh -huh. earlier uh you can find me on youtube if you just look up dwarf fortress and the word blind in any order you'll probably find me um, and then on Twitch, I go by Blind IRL, B L I N D I R L, where I stream Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and sometimes on Saturdays if I'm not dead. Uh, and then I have a secret account where I edit YouTube videos on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I just finished up that tutorial Let's Play. I've kind of slowed down on the quick tutorials because I've run out of super simple things that I can fit into under 10 minutes. Um, so tutorials have slowed down. But I do community forts. I look at people's fortresses and talk over them and generally get everything right. And uh, I'm launching a merch store tomorrow, so that'll be fun. Oh, yeah. So it's been soft launched, so there's already some stuff in there that people can see if they know how to get in there. Um, but uh, so I don't know, stare at my social media for that. Indeed. But, yeah, that's me. And uh, uh, Haunted Putty says, Blind, are you excited to play with Arena with the new graphics? I never really messed with Arena with the old graphics. Um, and because it's not going to have the adventure mode combat on it, it's basically just going to be like, I don't know, like an auto battler, but Dwarf Fort. So Dwarf Fortress Esports, let's go. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably, it's probably something chat will bug me to do and I'll do and then be like, why do I do this? Okay, let's go do actual Dwarf Fort. <laughs> it, it's, it's, Arena really isn't, it's not a game mode. I think Tarn's kind of overselling it. It's more of a testing zone yeah yeah, for yeah mods yeah like it's it's not really it's not a, a game, game mode. mode per se yeah uh, not in the way but... that say legends is i would say yeah. legends is a game mode in the same way as a a choose your own adventure is a book yeah it won't have the adventure so hunted putty said oh it won't have the adventure mode option yet it won't have the adventure mode combat in arena mode because they haven't done, made the ui for the adventure mode combat yet so they have to make the UI for the adventure mode combat. Otherwise, it would have the old adventure mode combat, which would be weird. <laughs> um, yeah, indeed. So I, it'll just be like spawn in critter, spawn in weapon and armor for critter, pick critter's alignment, and then watch them die. Which, you know, I mean, there's definitely an appeal to that. There's a, but like you say, it's a, it feels more like a testing thing. Good for yeah, it's a, it's a toy. Yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'll probably stream some arena mode because why not? Yeah, indeed. It's like it's there. Let's poke it. <laughs> See what it does. Yeah, it's the, let, let's play. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you who would win that. The dragon would definitely lose. <laughs> <laughs> Dragons are so weak. Like, people give dragons so much credit. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they're scary and they can burn down your drawbridges, but you just need a dwarf that's really good at dodging. You just need to hit them once. Yeah. Because they're about as fragile as a cat. They are proper <laughs> they glass apart. Mm -hmm. a, a glass cannon, indeed. Oh, Haunted Putty said, no, the dragon one. Oh, it depends if the, if the Colossus. It depends on who touches hit, who, first. who first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just who, whoever hits who first. Yeah, and a shield. And a wooden shield will stand up to dragon fire as long as the dwarf uses the shield before the dragon fire hits him. Which is why you need a wrestler, adventurer, spider person with six shields. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about... Or I was five gonna, shields and a sword. I was going to comment on the fact that your amp people have got multiple shields. I was wondering if that's because they've got multiple legs. Arms. Arms, legs, <laughs> indeed. Yep. Yeah, yeah, They have yeah. two legs, and then the rest of their legs are arms. <laughs> so plenty of... Plenty of arms to hold those shields. Run away from the octopus man. Mm. Anyway, shall we call it here for tonight? I think we're um, we're pretty much done. We've explained all the things. Uh, we'll just check any more questions from chat before we call it. I think we've been answering things as we go along. Yeah, mm. mostly. Well, Blind, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to have you on stream and hopefully we can have you back again to to cook up some more shenanigans of some some nature or other. Accidentally almost kill a cat. <laughs> yeah, 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 indeed. And uh, let's go find somebody that we can raid and we'll pass on the f Dwarf Fortress love to somebody. 